Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. So here's the question. And the question will not be answered this episode. It will not be answered this week. Uh, I actually think it's going to take six or seven weeks to to get a clearer picture of what it's going to be. The question is, gentlemen, is the we can and we will era over? Yes. The we can and we will era. Yes. Can you sign John Tavares, but also sign Matthews, Marner, and Nylander? We can and we will. It's a very famous quote if you're a Leafs fan. From the 32 Thoughts, and I think it was the 31 Thoughts podcast probably back then. Um, very famous quote from Dubas to Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick. Uh, by the way, I know they're I know they're like a big deal and stuff, but it'd be nice if Dubas made time for us once in a while. Um, I the Leafs don't do podcasts except for when they except do. for when they do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know that's the question, right? I I, I think we've got. Um, we got a game to break down, and I think we have a bit of an era to look back on. And this is where this this podcast is going to be complicated. What? A what? An an era. An era. <laughs> That's right. And and again, I don't know that there's any answers, and I don't really know if there's even really good predictions to be offered. To be honest, but I do think that you should know really selling the show that it well i mean i think that i think that the questions are what everybody wants to know this morning when you yeah. wake up like my my wife looked at me this morning she's like i she's like it took me about 10 minutes this morning to realize that they are in fact out of it mm. you know because it the thing is and i'll say this uh it's so much fun covering the playoffs it's so much fun uh, doing these shows i'm sad it's now i know what i'm missing yeah and I'm sad it's over. Yeah, it, it's. I thought I. I thought I knew what I was missing. Every year they got eliminated in the first round, and now I got a taste of um, what's beyond. And uh, you liked it, man. No wonder people like to win the cup. It's weird. Oh man, <laughs> I'm just on just how well like everything was doing, mm-hmm. like selfishly from a business standpoint. You know what I mean? Like just printing views and every video is a hit mm-hmm. and uh no but i'm glad they lost Nyaha. okay okay Nyaha. adam do you want me to play uh we can and we will yeah can you all right let me see if this is the right video can you keep all four of them Tavares, nylander marner and matthews does the salary structure allow you to do that we can and and we will so that's the quote and then, of course, the interview, uh, I mean, God, if Jeff and Elliot are not pumping the shit out of that interview this morning and put, putting it on their Twitter, I don't <laughs> know. 2018. Yeah. 2018. I would be telling them, like, if I was if I was their boss, I'd be like, you, you guys re-release that episode and give me some thoughts. Um, you know, uh, of them. so so that that's the question. The, the first thing we need to do, though, is we need to go through the game last night. Um, you know, is that the first thing we need? To yeah, do? that is the first <laughs> thing we're gonna do. It's what we're gonna do, and I know you did it on the LFR, which I watched this morning. I, Jesse, Jesse, what did Steve say <laughs> off the top of the LFR that made you laugh? <laughs> yeah, I walked in because Adam was watching it uh, this morning, and then I said, you know, Steve started the LFR, and he's like, I don't know what to say, and then he proceeded to talk for forty-five minutes. It was it was over forty. That's a guy <laughs> over who it was has pretty close. nothing to say. Who could talk for nearly couldn't, an hour? Couldn't know. <laughs> couldn't possibly know. But you know what? I thought it was I thought it was really well executed. Um, and you know what was interesting is Steve spends way less time on the game in his LFR than we will on this because we're going to okay. spend a lot more time, you know, kind of breaking it down. Yeah. First period, you know, the Leafs get started and there's a good chance uh, scoring chance for Mitch Marner right off the start. And what did I ask you guys? Uh, sorry, not what did I ask you. What answer did you give me last episode when I said, if there's going to be a game six, if we're sitting here Saturday morning and the Leafs have won game five, what will have happened? Do you remember your answer to that? I think it was the core four did their job. And right off the bat, seeing Mitch Marner in there looking dangerous is great. Now the Leafs take a penalty at uh, 1823, which is less than two minutes in. Uh, it's Jake McCabe with the high stick. 
Uh, looked as though one of the the, the banter that he high sticked was was bleeding, but thankfully they didn't call that bleed either. You can read the ref's lips, and he's basically going, "Ah, that's nothing." Mm-hmm. Like, um, is it red or is it not red, ref? No, you need to bleed a certain amount that's completely subjective to the official, which is sub professional. I'm I'm a I'm a listen. I'm an anti ref guy. Uh, but I, uh, I have to say anti ref is as in like anti how they're calling the games right now. Uh, uh, you hate I, them as people. If I would, no, I don't hate them as people. <laughs> no. Uh, There's no one in charge. No, they're well. And, and the thing is, is that the rule's pretty clear. If you're bleeding, it's four minutes and I am a Leaf fan and I'm telling you that should have been four minutes. No, but the ref said he was bleeding inside of his mouth and it was just from like, you got hit there. Where, so it's with, not really By bleeding. the stick to the face on his teeth. Yeah, but it was what inside of doing? his mouth and it was just kind of like a bruise. So, so it's not four all minutes. these people. People have driver's licenses. They're on the road with you. They're a danger to us all. No, I think I, it's I, the it's the policies, man. It's the yeah. policies up top. Also, what? I think it was a slightly uh, makeup call for Michael Bunting. <laughs> Which should have also <laughs> been fucking yeah. no, I, I think, like, legitimately, these refs do makeup calls. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if we know that. If it's an... on tape from some snarky asshole on Twitter. <laughs> oh, my God. If there is an egregious call that goes against one team, they will find a way to balance it out for the other team. And I think in this situation, they kind of did right by the Michael Bunting call in the previous game. Not a league. It's a joke. So, uh, with basically the, the Florida, Florida power play... Looks good. Wall uh, is tested right off the top. Makes great saves. But with five seconds to go, it just sneaks under his arm off of an Ekblad shot. And it's already one nothing. And, you know, guys like Jake McCabe were the guys that they helped or they wanted to bring in to help not just solidify their defense, but also make them a lot tougher. And penalties like that are, are ones that refs are going to call, even in the playoffs, every time they have to call them. I Until went, they don't. I went from ecstatic about that deal to maybe they move him at the draft in a week. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think he did a tough series. I think he was good against Tampa. Yeah. I like Jake McCabe. Yeah, I like Jake McCabe a lot. He like, was poor in this series. Okay, fair enough. But I still like him. He, There's a lot of people who were poor that it mattered more. That they, they were poor. That's very fair. Mm-hmm. That's very fair, Adam. But you're right. It wasn't. And you know what? Mr. Dependable TJ Brody wasn't great either. I think it's possible to have a bad series and you don't need to be shipped out of town. Mm -hmm. A bad series one, singular, Mm -hmm. and not, you know, for the better part of a decade. Well, uh, (laughs) Leafs go on the power play. Ekblad goes off. Good chances. Florida kills kills the power play. Leafs get a second power play. Uh, Radko Gudis, who could have been called for about four things on this one play, um, where he gets, you know, his the second penalty for Florida... Uh, I forget what he even was. It Interference really against TJ Bro. Well, there you go. Uh, he loses his mind on the way uh, to the to the to the press or sorry to the uh, to the box. Florida kills that power play. And and what what I wrote down here and and this is a, a problem that the Leafs have had for years, but it really again reared its head in this series is they are looking for the perfect shot, yeah. and what they do is they overpass their opportunity. And what I mean by that is. It's like, well, what if we just had one more pass? I might have a better look at the net. And at almost every goal, with the exception of the William Nylander bounce goals, both of them, uh, he had that one bounce goal in game three. He had that crazy rush later on this game. Every single goal that the Leafs scored in this series was like through traffic on a deflection. Every single goal versus Tampa. They got all these guys who are so good at rebounding and like they went out and acquired more. They've emphasized playoff style goals for years, and then they refuse to put themselves in a position to get them. And they keep it's it, it's the you cannot look for perfect open looks in the playoffs. You just are not going to get them. It's funny you're playing good teams now. It's it's, <laughs> it's crazy how Austin Matthews is off the rush snapshot kind of gets eliminated in the playoffs. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, like yeah. Think about how many times in the regular season we see Austin Matthews come down the left side of the ice and snap one before the goalie even knows what happens. Mm -hmm. And that rarely happened in the last seven years in the playoffs. It's really hard to pull that type of shot off unless you got a friend in front of the net holding the defender's stick. But it's really... Really hard to pull that sort of thing off. Is, is the friend's name Radko Gutz? <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so then, okay, uh, and then we get another Florida goal. Uh, this one comes off after a McCabe rush that almost leads to something. And what happens is the puck goes back the other way, as often happens with rush chances. And 
if it's not bouncing, Timothy Lilligren is able to gra- grab that puck, corral it, mm-hmm. and then flip it back into the neutral but zone. But it was fucking bouncing. And he didn't do... He took a swing at it rather than kind of taking it down with his stick. What you do with a bouncing puck, right, is you try to graciously put it towards the ground and flatten it out. Now, you have to do with that in a split second mm-hmm. in the NHL, and I understand that that's hard, but that's also the job. That's the job. That's the job. I I don't know. If it's too hard for you, don't play in the NHL. So he mishandles it in the neutral zone. Anthony Duclair gets it, gets it over to Carter Verhage, who shoots. Uh, Joseph Wall has a piece of it, and he, man, he was great in that first period, and and honestly... Wall? Yeah, Wall yeah. was great, oh, yeah. and, and he had to go right across the net completely, and he still almost got it, but it did go in. He was so much better than can be reasonably expected of a rookie goalie. Uh, I think he hit 40 saves. Joseph Wall was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. his save total. Uh, unbelievable. They had 43 shots, so yeah, 40 made, saves. Yeah, 40 um, saves. He held them in that game, like... I wish Joseph Wall was in there from the start, just seeing how he played. We, we said it after game two. Yeah. It was like, yo, he, he, Sammy is clearly injured. He's yeah. losing his posts. He can't get up. I mean, put him in. And unfortunately, it had it took like a, a literally a series ending, ending injury to get a look at Joseph Wall. Yeah, Joseph Wall should have had game three, and it's unfortunate that he wasn't in there earlier because he's the best goalie in the organization right now. For a dude who never grew up playing hockey, I shouldn't be right this often. I, I think we grossly overthink this sport. Play the healthy player. Mm-hmm. It's not that hard. With the with the goal we're talking about there, the Verhage goal, and and the from their own end to the blue line pass, it you, it's countless the number of times they did that in Florida uh, to the Leafs, and that's just kind of how they play hockey. These these crazy breakout passes where they just flip it out over the zone. There's always somebody at the blue line waiting to receive the pass, and they did it in such an expert way, and they're always quick to the puck and. If it's such an easy way to beat the Leafs, you know, they kind of just discovered, hey, somebody gets to the other side of the blue line, we'll send the outlet pass, and then we just need to score. So it's never about, like, sustained pressure with the Florida Panthers because they can just no. leave the zone, send this pass down, you get the puck to Verhage, he scores because Lillerin can't handle it. I, let, let me reinforce that point. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sportsnet and Sport Logic put up this uh, graphic. Okay. Uh, you know what, Jesse? I'm going to send it over to you. Okay. I'm going to send it over to you because <laughs> I feel like you need to see it. All right. Okay? It's so going to make me look smarter like an idiot. No, you're going to look real <laughs> fucking smart okay. because this is exactly what you just said, but okay. in numbers. And the only two stats that matter on this, by the way, are the bottom two stats. Well, the goals matter. That's the top stat. But there are five stats listed. Goal shots, slot shots, cycle chances, and ozone possession. Cycle chances and ozone possession are the only two stats if you're a Leaf fan, that matter in this graphic. This is courtesy of Sportsnet and Sports Logic. Cycle chances: Leafs five, Panthers one. Ozone p- possession: Leafs three fifteen, Panthers forty one seconds. <laughs> oh my goodness! That's in the first period. Forty one seconds of ozone possession, and they have two goals. They don't need it. They don't need it at all. That is the the absolute like i've never seen opportunistic like i've seen with the florida panthers yeah. holy saw, smokes i saw someone sarcastically look at the numbers for last night and go oh well yeah you certainly have to blow it up and it just reminded me i'm not, I'm not a big the office guy but it just reminded me of that episode where michael scott and dwight schrute are in the car together and michael scott is following his nav system and dwight's like there's a body of water right there and mike's like yeah but the nav says this and he drives right into the fucking lake mm-hmm <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, they, I, yeah, I agree. All those things are good things. Down to nothing. Yeah, Scott, because, a fox. because of the way the Panthers play, they don't need the cycle chances to score goals. Yeah, I... I Sam Bennett's too quick to the puck. From, like, from the moment game one happened, I'm like, oh, okay, this conversation's going to be insufferable. Because the, the Panthers do not play a style of hockey where they win these numbers. They simply win games. games and most teams... Do have numbers that match the results. The Panthers do not, and they will not. That's mm-hmm. just not how they play. Scott Wheeler reading the room, and he <laughs> did read the room. He said, "I know nobody wants to hear it." That's reading the room. Bless you, Scott. <laughs> uh, but shot attempts were twenty to six for the Leafs that period. Scoring chances seven to two. So the Panthers scored on both chances that they had uh, for the Leafs on five on five. And uh, and Scott said the Panthers' expected goals fours was in the first period was point two four. 
What so, now? Th- so oh, sorry, th- one that, more doesn't, thing. that doesn't really line up. You said shot attempts were twenty to six. Uh, sorry, shot attempts were twenty to six, and scoring chances were seven to. So for the, the Leafs, five. The on shots five. here that we have stats after twenty are fourteen to twelve. Attempts though. Six. So they have 12 shots on goal. How could they have six sh- shots? Oh, at even strength. Even at strength. Even Sorry, strength. even oh, strength. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Five on five. That was <laughs> okay. that was I'm the part. I was the first time I read <laughs> Sorry, it. Sorry, I, I didn't read it properly, but yes, that was that's it. Okay, he okay. he does specify it's five on five that period in five on five. And the the pan the Panthers had a point two four ex- expected goals for. Now, somebody who's a very smart fan named Vincent Hanna. I want to shout out Vincent. He wrote this. Obviously. They are playing much better than the results indicate this round. However, the time for moral victories passed long ago. They need to find a way to string together wins in the playoffs, regardless of whether they control the play or not. And Scott Wheeler said, yes, this is level-headed. And that is sort of how you have to look at it after the first period. It, you, I just wrote, boy, this is frustrating. <laughs> like, it's just you're sitting there watching a team that's objectively playing better and playing their own game. The Leafs did play their game in this in this particular game. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I look at that and I go, 40 minutes, that seems like a long enough time to get this done. But holy shit, that's a really tight timeline to turn around a 2 nothing deficit. You know, the, the Panthers are a team that relies on opportunities. Mm-hmm. The Leafs are a team that rely on miracles. Like, historically, they rely on miracles. They were down 2 nothing on home ice. They needed to come back. They did. They lost. In game six against the Montreal Canadiens, they needed to erase a 2 0 deficit. They did. They lost. In game five of that very same series, they needed to erase a 3 0 deficit. They did. They lost. Against Tampa, they needed to erase a 4 1 deficit. They did. They won. They need a goal in the final minute of game three. They did. They won. How many times? Like, you're just relying on the grace of God, basically. We keep talking about attention to detail and full effort and avoiding the brain fart. They're the the, the kings of flatulence, these guys. All they have <laughs> are brain farts. Uh, they outshot the Habs 12 to two. And, and yes, it's all relevant. Yes, what happened two years ago is relevant to the conversation because we're talking about doomsday scenarios once we finish with this game. Dermot spinning around like a fucking top for no good reason while the Leafs are out shooting the Habs, Habs 12 to 2. It, it erases everything. It erases all the good work he did. Well, Carey Price stood on his head, and so did Bob, and so did Corpusalo, and so did Vasilevsky, and so did Ras. Can we fucking grow up here? The Leafs lose hockey games. End of story. That's it. That's all. Fix it. Second period. Sure, go for it. <laughs> hey, Leafs score about twelve minutes in. Or sorry, twelve minutes left. Eight minutes in. Lafferty gets it to Riley. Riley shoots it into traffic. It looked as though well, Yarn Crow and Kampf were. In front, I thought Kampf tipped it. I guess he didn't. Uh-huh. And Riley gets credited with the one, goal. One off Cousins. Noted uh, stats legend Sam Lafferty and David Kampf. Uh, Joseph Wall uh, makes a pretty good save. Glove save on Kachuk. He's looked confident. You know, he just, nothing was, he nothing was, was getting to us. Yeah, he was great. He's, uh, uh, how long until Joseph Wall is the best goalie the Leafs have? I, he is. He is the best goalie the Leafs have. Who's yeah. better than him if, right now? If Sammy's 100%, which he hasn't been for at least a month. Joseph Wall looked better than Sammy looked at any point. Let's save Let's save this because I do want to have that conversation. No, I do good, want to have that conversation. Good conversation to have. Yeah. Uh, Leafs have solid pressure. Leafs score again. Uh, but <laughs> not in a way that I thought, oh, this one. Yeah. Did they? Morgan Riley seems to get a goal on another great Morgan Riley drive, which he's been so good at this series. So good at, uh, and so, sorry, so good at these playoffs. Maybe not as much this series. Uh, puck is in the net. It is under Bob's ankle. He went from overpaid to indispensable in two, like. That's what the playoffs do, though, month. aren't they? Isn't that what the playoffs are for? Oh, yeah. We find out who the real players are. He elevated his he, game. he was the best player for the Leafs the entire playoffs. Yeah. Jesse, how many I, goals did Morgan Riley have in the regular season? I think it was. I, I forgot to look. I think it up. was two, and then he had four in the playoffs. I'll, <laughs> I'll triple check. It's crazy. 
So Morgan Riley Love seems it. to score. Here, let me let me just read the numbers. It was <laughs> during the regular season, Morgan Riley had four, and during the playoffs, he had four. In there 65 games. Yeah. And then in 11, he had four, eight. That's 12 points. 12 the- points in 11 games from the back end, and you win five games. If you hand it out Leafs Ooh. con Smice, like Morgan Riley gets it. Easily. Not even close. Um so then uh so Morgan Riley seems to score. Puck seems to be in the net under Bob's ankle. Uh but they can't conclusively say it's over the line because we don't have VAR technology in the NHL. Uh no angle and and I'm sorry I'm sorry to say this as a Leaf fan. Every single screenshot you've been sent is wipe your ass with is Bobrovsky after the yeah. whistle goes like like I know it's in the net you know it's in the net Jesse knows it's in the net the Panthers know it's in the net but if you cannot conclusively prove it while play is happening continuation rule or not then it is not a goal and if if the same thing happened to the Leafs you'd be like wow too bad suck it yeah. <laughs> like do honestly I, do I think it was in the net absolutely it was in the net let's just call it what it is it was in the net it was but, in the net but if you can't prove it, we don't you know. know. But they made the right call. Yeah. You cannot call that a goal. And if you are the Leafs, and this is the problem, and I hate to quote Mike Babcock, but I will, leave no doubt. Why? Why are we in this position in the first place, which is something we can get to later in the game? If your season comes down to leaving it in the hands of the NHL, are you fucking crazy? You're fucked. Don't do that. No. You know that that's not good. Leave no doubt. Make it five to two. Don't make it two to one, two nothing, and then two to one, and then, oh man, oh our whole series hinges on this. Ask, Don't go down three zero. Ask Oilers fans uh, about oh. leaving it in the hands of the NHL. Alex Petrangelo oh. might end their season tomorrow. I know, man. I was watching that game afterwards. I could not believe the sequence when it went from two one to four two in like three minutes. I couldn't oh, yeah. believe it. That's couldn't Vegas, couldn't though. fucking believe it. Yeah, Vegas. Holy shit. Could um, um, the could nurse. It's absolutely ridiculous that people are sending around the the photo of the puck after play with Bobrovsky getting up. Well, that that was the most egregious part of that whole review is them going back to the film of Bobrovsky getting up when the play is over. Like if yeah. the puck is in the net when the play is over, that's not evidence that the puck was in the net. But also the one there's one going around of the dead on angle yeah. and Guys, it blown up. Guys, like, we, we know angles I, and geometry. Mm-hmm. And can we stop? I also want to ask Don't this. give people hope that There's, that is baseless. Is it possible for the NHL to have an angle from any other angle other than, like, if I was looking at that, I'm like, if they had TV cameras on the other side of the ice or just cameras that aren't for TV, okay. they probably could have seen that. But they've only got the angle from the side. The one no, side. no, they have the one from down. Do they? That that was the one that was like blown up, the one where you can see it coming like on the from goal. the other side. Yeah, it's it's not from the other side, but it's like from where the blue line is. You know, it was pretty. Okay. It was pretty like down there. Okay, but why do we only have one camera in the net? Two. There there's are two. two. There's, oh there's right, a there's two. Because yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. the but the funny thing was is the one that's lower that's supposed to manage the goal line. Uh, most of the time, because it's up too high, you can only see the goalie's ass. Yeah, like you can't. Like That's it doesn't show you anything, and I'm like, here's here's the camera that you should fucking have. Are you ready? Here's the fucking camera you have. Why is there not a camera at the base of the net? Yeah. Why? No, because because then even in the Bob situation, him from the uh, you can't you wouldn't be able to see through him. Oh, I, I understand that, but if you got it, so if the net is here, right, yeah. and the, and my hand is the base of the net, have yeah. the camera here so you can combine that with other angles. Oh. No. I could see under Bob's ass. You're you're thinking you're going completely in the wrong di- direction to find solutions for this. Well, the solution to this is there is currently a chip in the puck. The chip in the puck provides yeah. information to the NHL and to all the teams about stats that are happening during the game. There's also a chip in the back of every player's jersey. Not a lot of people know this. They they wear a fucking chip, and there's also one in the puck. If you cut open an NHL puck, you'll find technology in there. That technology is capable of syncing with the red line because we've seen it in numerous pro sports. Tennis. Like, like tennis who does it regularly and Soccer. within milliseconds they have the uh, access to it. They've seen it in the World Cup. Just Activate the fucking chip technology that you already have. Sync it with the red, uh, the goal line, so we already know if it's in or not. So there was Just a very pay for it, in- NHL. Yep. There was an interesting conversation last night I saw between Rachel Dory, who has worked for two NHL teams, 
and scouting the refs who are just brilliant and I love them. Um, Rachel argued, listen, this technology exists. Scouting the refs uh, said yes, but they're not satisfied with the accuracy of it. And then Rachel said something cryptic about basically she knows something that we don't know, which I assume is true. She worked for two NHL teams. But, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we don't have the technology. And I don't think the league, if there's chips in the puck anyway, would withhold the technology just because. Wait, they're not. Why aren't they? Why don't they just get the better technology? It's, it's probably a my money assumption thing. is it's just not developed Liter- yet. They no, just, it's literally it's just simple. no, but it is. It is developed. Like it, a strike zone in baseball has existed for enough time now that we know you can you can accurately get a thing that's going a hundred miles per hour in baseball. You can track it into this little box. You can track a puck to see if it crossed the line. Is there something about a puck that makes it more no. difficult to do than a baseball? No. No, I don't, there are, I don't no. Know. there's the, there's no way. It, you know what, Steve? I, I honestly, guys, I think it comes down to this. They haven't had a group uh, circle jerk uh, with all the guys who make all the decisions <laughs> and brought it to the table. The, the, and, the and, NHL and, players can barely decide on whether or not their players are worth protecting. Well, so what, we you can know, talk about so, that. We are going to talk about yeah. that. But I... I uh, uh, I actually think that that this is that the technology exists. It's probably just like we're kind of cheap and we don't want to, and we yeah. think our system works. And we would. Every, so here's the thing: every time the NHL makes a change, they're admitting that their previous policy didn't work well enough, and so that in a lot of organizations stymies change because um, because you're basically saying, "Hey, you know the strategy we've had for ten years? Well, we told you it was going to work, but it didn't." The so, NHL and we and we cop to that. Nobody wants to take that responsibility. Tennis, baseball, soccer, and there you are, last again. It's you, again. It's a you bummer. Wonder why you're a second thought to most sports fans. You can't tell me a soccer ball and a tennis ball and a baseball are any different than a hockey puck. Figure it out. Yeah. No, just fi- and like if you can't do it right now, then figure it out. It's and, been enough time. And by the way, if you're listening to this conversation and you hate it and you think we're insufferable. The chip technology would prevent this conversation. <laughs> yeah. It would have been, well, goddamn, it wasn't in. Mm-hmm. Shit. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Well, hopefully they get another one. And Isn't that's it? not the reason the Leafs lost. Yes. It is not. Yeah. Um, It is not. And this is the thing, right? Uh, the Leafs let themselves go down 2-0. And you can say, well, the Panthers were opportunistic. Well, that's hockey. Uh, you you look at the and we're by the way we're in the second period like I I a lot of Flames fans were reaching out and going hey man I feel you only we were in the Stanley Cup final in two thousand four and I think it was was it Corey Stillman that had it robbed or who had it, who had the oh no uh fucking Con- Craig Conroy no he uh he had the game winner in every series Calgary won oh my god well we can uh. I forget his name. But I don't want other fan bases to think that the Leafs were robbed. Oh, they weren't. They weren't at all. Like, don't feel Uh, bad. Don't feel bad for us in this situation. There's other reasons you can feel bad for the Leafs fans. I'm looking at it. Not this goal. Don't worry. This goal isn't that. Martin Jelena. Martin Martin Jelena was the guy. Yeah, man, he was great. He was great. This isn't the time to feel bad. No, it isn't. This Morgan Riley goal, it wasn't a goal. Um, Dom LeCision. On penalties in the uh, in the series, this is by the way at the second intermission. He said this is the least, sorry, second least penalized series in the analytics era. Wow! So probably in the last ten years. Don't worry, guys. It's all in your heads. Um, and then the official explanation on the review from the NHL is as follows: Are you ready? Uh, no goal, Toronto. The referee deemed the play dead prior to the puck crossing the Florida line. The call was made in accordance with Rule 78.5, which states apparent goal shall be disallowed when referee deems the play has been stopped, even if it had not been physically, uh, sorry, even if he had not physically had the opportunity to stop play by blowing the whistle. So essentially what they're saying is, they because the, the question in the intermission, and I think it's a good one, is, well, he didn't blow the whistle. So if he doesn't blow the whistle, is the play not still going? So that's another thing. Like, we, <laughs> we, that is not the first time it's happened where the ref didn't know what was happening and thus didn't blow the whistle. So then how do you deem then when the play was dead? Like, oh, this is what I meant to. 
Like how, how do you how do you deem it? I don't know. Now, they they do they do like have that. And it'll be like the play has stopped in this reasonable moment. I don't know what the exact wording is, but that is something that's kind of in the rule book. Yeah, like, th- yeah, there was a moment where the puck clearly visibly crossed the line. Mm-hmm. But guys, we all know the play was dead. Exactly. Like, and that reasonable moment, that kind of on the ice, the situation, the play, nobody's yeah. really playing anymore. That can be deemed a, hey, the whistle should have gone there, so we can't rule it a goal anymore. It's incredibly rinky-dink that we have those scenarios. <laughs> um, but certainly, at the end of the day, we know the play was dead. Okay, so Leafs start uh, the third period with some good pressure, some really good chances. They were great in the third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, eight minutes into the period, and I wrote, uh, they haven't been able to finish, but they're looking really good. Uh, then for Hagee, almost immediately afterwards, as as I write this down, you think you you see why Leaf fans believe that they're cursed, right? Uh, for Hagee, he almost has a breakaway, but Justin Hall, haul an ass in what is probably <laughs> his last game as a Leaf. There should have been haul an ass Haul an ass. Oh, and a haul ass. His face like on a truck, and yeah. it says haul an ass. Just him and... <laughs> Just his face and a butt. <laughs> um, a donkey. No, that's there you go. Um, he keeps Paul carrying a donkey. He keeps Verhage to the side and pressures him, and it allows Wool to stay up on his feet. He didn't have to go down to make the save. Stayed up on his feet, and both of them together angle off Verhage. And I thought that was a really good defensive play. I'm like, man, oh, yeah. I-, I wish the Leafs did that more. Uh, Leafs goal. William Nylander, who has, of the core four, been the most productive this playoffs, probably in the last three playoffs, and frankly, their best player under pressure. He's most perfect. Cons- most consistent playoff performer his, uh, it, since entering the league. His uh, his uh, attitude, I think, which is, uh, for some reason, still rubs people the wrong way. I don't get it. But his attitude in the playoffs is perfect for Toronto hockey because he just does not get wrapped up in it. Mm-hmm. And is this- is this a conversation for after we break down the game? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry, we'll get into it. No, we'll no, no. Because you're right. You're right. I, you're I, right. I got a lot to say about my victory lap. We need to do about my favorite player, Willie. Uh, uh, Willie showed some real heart and soul on that. Uh, scored that goal against Bobrovsky. She traded another. Rangers. It's it's he catches Bobrovsky at the perfect moment. Bobrovsky's decided that he's going to go down to cover the post. And Montour. I know, but like. Yeah. Like, Bobrovsky's the unsolvable one. We can get shots past Montour. That's it's fucking Bobrovsky that's the problem. Yeah, man. And he oh. goes down to cover the post, and as he's midway down, the puck sails over his shoulder. You, There's nothing Bob can do. He can't lift his shoulder back up as he's going down. And that was Nylander creating what, Jesse? A, just a clear shot off the rush. Yeah. That thing that we said was impossible for Matthews to generate. William Nylander has done it. Fairly consistently throughout the playoffs. Matthews, Marner. The way Tavares. the way he skates in the offensive zone in like a free way is it's so it's so me- mesmerizing to watch because no other leaf kind of has that freedom. He's one of my favorite players to watch skate. Yeah. When when he starts pulling those fucking crossovers, you're dead. You're dead. There's so few players in the league who can manage that mm-hmm. once he starts that in stride. Because dead with with Mitch, like we see a lot of that during the regular season, then we don't see it as much in the playoffs. And with Willie, you see it all the time, and, and that's something special. He had some shifty moments, Mitch. Mm-hmm. Um, he had his games. It's just not consistent enough. It's not enough, and they should have separated him and Matthews long ago. Uh, that will be a conversation we'll have <laughs> after. Yeah. Um, Eight seconds to go. I want to show you something. Is it Mark Stahl? It's Mark Stahl on okay. Mitch Marner. Now, we can only was show you the screen grab of this. I thought it was Bunting. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was on Mitch Marner. I could be wrong. doesn't matter. Uh, eight seconds to go. Uh, one of the most egregious elbows I've ever seen. And I'm telling you this because uh, I've seen a lot of egregious elbows. Watched a lot of Gordy Howe highlights. But even Gordy... Would have got a call on this. And Gordy would have looked at that and been like, yo, man, that's dirty. Mark Stahl on Mitch Marner. The puck is nowhere near him. Like, So here's the freeze frame is right there. The puck is with the other Florida Panther that you can see on that screen. All Mitch is doing, or Michael Bunting, or whoever it is. It's Mitch. It's it's Mitch. Mitch. It is Mitch. Uh, I thought it was Mitch. Sorry. All Mitch is doing is doing a swing into the offensive zone. And Mark Stahl goes, you know what? Eat this. And he has to. Adam... We've been watching hockey for decades. 
Nine seconds left in a playoff game. Oh, it's never going to happen. But it's just, it's it's relevant to the game. No, it's relevant to the game. And it's not like anti-Leafs. Um, and it's not like, woe is us. It's, it wasn't called because it was us. Um, it's uh, like, it's I'll, the playoffs. I'll, I'll keep saying it. Like, I watch too many sports, like too many different sports. This isn't a league. It's just not um, that that's allowed. <laughs> that's fine. Oh, that's hockey. Cool. That's a rinky dink bullshit thing. <laughs> I don't understand hockey fans contempt of sporting. Like in order for something to be a sport, there's rules and you're not allowed to break them. And when you break them, there's punishment. And that's just not a thing in hockey. Like, I just don't understand the contempt hockey fans have for the spirit of sports. Well, a you lot can't... of hockey fans only watch hockey. I think that's part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Why is that allowed? I don't know. It's well, because hockey, man's game. and You don't have an argument, you fucking imbecile. Why is that allowed? Well, my question is not that anymore. My question is why have the Leafs never taken advantage of it? I think it's on the Leafs. Fucking thank you. 2013, we had the same complaint. I don't remember as much of it in 2017. In 18, the Bruins are 2019, same bitching and moaning. And we're we're responsible for the bitching and moaning too. I was up there bitching and moaning. I am the bitch and the moan. I'm yeah, but I'm tired of doing the bitching and the moaning. Dubois mean to us in the bubble. Mm-hmm. And oh Sherrod and Edmondson get away with everything. Yep. And Maroon is the ice. Barry, they're so mean. And Bennett, I want him arrested. Fuck. We're always on the whining end of this. And we're right, by the way. Every single time we're right. Man, I love being right and eliminated. Uh, Just start playing the game that the way that they play it in the playoffs. It's Listen, it's a league uh, run by psychos, built by psychos, designed for psychos. <laughs> Go get some psychos. You have to. Um, that's what it is. Well, and that's, I, we'll get to I'm that. I'm disappointed in Luke Shen. I thought there would have been a moment in this series where Luke Shen like takes a run at Bennett or Gudis because I thought that's what Luke the, Shen was one of their most effective defensemen. <laughs> yeah, so taking him off is a bad idea. I didn't expect him to come in there and just kind of be a steady back end defenseman. You know, I thought I thought Luke Shen would have played a, a meaner game and he would have just like when Sam Bennett sitting on Jake McCabe punching him in the face. I expected, hey, next game, I don't know, maybe Who? he gets. Punched back. Sam Bennett? Yeah. Oh, oh man. Where does he play? Florida. Mm. Yeah, yeah, But, like, where in their lineup? Uh, Very high up in it. Yeah, second line, right? Yeah. Top six? Yeah, top six. And uh, the guy who was nominated for the heart, um, Matthew, Matthew Chuck, Kuchuk, where does yeah. he play? Uh, it, He's a tough nut, Which right? one where do you does, consider the first play? line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably first, Florida. Second line. Florida. Probably the first and, line. And the guy who scored the first and last goal of this series, Nick Cousins, where, mm-hmm. where did he play during this series? Uh, middle, middle lineup. Yeah. 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 The top, top six. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was yeah. on that line. Yeah. All three second, of those guys were on the same line. line. Yeah. The and, Cousins, uh, Bennett, Kachuk yeah. line. Yeah. And we, we know Gudis is a tough nut, but yeah. like, uh, Aaron Ekblad was all around it and he was roughing guys up all series. Where, where does he play for Florida? The first pairing. First pairing. Yeah. And he was healthy. How about, How about that? The best players on your team grow a fucking backbone. Simmons. Lafferty, uh, you know, any third pair defenseman, you go out and you get all these grunts and it's fine and it's good for your team and it helps. If your top guys are not about that life, the rest of the team will not be about that life. It, hmm. Does Tavares have a career fight in Toronto? I don't know. I don't want him fighting. Uh-huh. Maybe that's part of the problem. Matthews, who is literally cleaning up when Stamkos mauled him and that's his only career fight. And I don't want him fighting with his surgically repaired wrists. Mm -hmm. Marner's like a buck 70 soaking wet. If we've established that the rules that the NHL has written down do not matter and that the rule book is just irrelevant. Why don't the Leafs take care of, uh, why don't they take advantage of that and do their own? This is my thing. And for something like, the Matthew Nyes incident, which we've all just kind of forgotten about. 
zero retribution for that. No. If they're the rules Handshakes. don't matter. The, the first time they touched Sam Bennett is they shook his hand. <laughs> yeah. Thanks they're not we're not done the game yet, but yes. No, for if, concussing our rookie. If if there's no rules, why not take advantage of the no rules and get retribution the, for a guy like Matthew Nice? The Leafs are designed to be exactly what they are. A great regular season team that is not built for playoff hockey. Well, and 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 I think there's something to that. The Florida Panthers were a great regular season team last year. This year they were bad and then good and then bad and then really wow okay surprisingly good but you know still kind of soft according to Keith Kachuk going into the playoffs and um and Boy, frankly he played them like a fiddle eh? he sure did it was perfect good he on him did it when he was coming through Toronto too when he knew it would get the most media exposure and then, it's, it's, and then they ended their season right <laughs> brilliance from Keith Kachuk so brilliance what what good teams do uh, like it seems the Florida Panthers have done. They're a perfect example of a team that went into last offseason, sorry, last postseason, too soft. They won their first round, and Tampa wrecked them in the second round. But boy, does it seem, A, they took advantage of, uh, of Kachuk wanting out of Calgary. Boy, did they win that one. Big trade. Big trade. Boy, if, did they, they get that one. They got lucky. If I could go back in time, Marner for Kachuk. I would have... Yeah, that should have been the move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Kachuk. I think was, Kachuk was. Kachuk doesn't there. want to be in Canada, though. He did not want to be in Canada. It was. It was. He will not accept a trade to a Canadian team, is what he said. Right. And it was because of the COVID lockdowns. A lot of the American guys don't want to be stuck in in Canada when they can't see their family for a year. So would have been nice. Would have been great. I, I'm with you, Jess. And here are my third period thoughts, and you guys can tell me what you think. So it's tied two two. We're going in overtime. It can go either way. Again, the Leafs leaving it to chance. Eleven million dollar guys need to score is the first thing I wrote. They had their chance. It's it's not an option. It's not an option. It's a must. Which, if if I tell you, and I wrote this down before the game ended, if I told you before the series that Matthews and Marner would combine for one goal in the first five games, how do you think you would feel the series was going? I can't believe it went five. You wouldn't even need to watch the games. Leafs and Leafs out in three. That's like if LeBron James, they were. if LeBron James is is like even in this era, in his older era, if LeBron James is under fifteen points a game, mm -hmm. I don't think the Lakers are winning anything. No. If Steph Curry is not hitting thirty points a game, if he's hitting fifteen, uh, the Golden State Warriors, who did go down last night. Uh, they're not winning any games. They're not winning any games. So if Matthews and Marner, and you're like, well, what about the rest of the team? No, 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 guys. They are the team. The team's built around them. Patriots win despite Brady being shit. Didn't happen. It's just not a headline. And so, so uh, Willie scored. Tavares looked dangerous. Marner looked better these last two games. Um, really good high event hockey in the third. Extremely entertaining. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Let's get to overtime. Yeah. Also, fucking entertaining. F fucking entertaining. How did that make it out of the first five minutes? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, man, is this going to be, way. is this going to be the triple overtime game we haven't gotten in 20 years? That's what I kind of thought. Mm. Uh, it didn't go that way though. And I wrote down this when it, it's happened. I said, someone fucking scores an OT. Who fucking cares? And it turned out to be Nick Cousins. But I want to show you this play. Uh, I want to show you this play too. Okay. Are we going to talk about Gudis? We're going to talk about Gudis tripping yarn croak. And then screaming in in Wolf's no, face, holding the not even tripping, Ho holding the stick, holding the stick. I got I got you the replay, and it's a you'll have to freeze frame it. But it's again playoff hockey. It did lead directly to a goal though, and that's one of those you can't miss this penalties. It really is yeah. like like listen, T.J. Brody got a you can't not call that penalty. In 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 he, the in overtime, he whacked it over the glass. At first, I thought it was Barkov. Uh, the alternate angle showed it was clearly Brody. You have to call it. You have to call that. Mm -hmm. There are certain things you have to call. Although the refs are showing us that you can't. You can get high sticked in the face late in the game in these playoffs. No call. You can yeah. Uh, you can woodchuck uh, Leon Drysaddle, best player in the league right now. Right across the wrist, one game. That's still such a if joke. If that's one game. I know. We, we why don't it. you just send out a guy to go hack people I in would, the face? Just go get get a bunch of guys suspended. It's oh my, who send cares? out a line of guys it's to do that. It's because of who Petro is. Watch. Kolasar is going to get more than Petro. I know, that that Kolasar hit was brutal. Oh, it was bad. Nah, Fucking brutal. Two minutes. <laughs> so, so 
Uh, Radko Gudis does what Radko Gudis does. This is what's made him effective. He's a bastard to play against. Um, and he gets in the fucking way all the time. And this is what he does with Yarncroke. Yarncroke could have absolutely stopped Nick Cousins on that. Yarncroke's a solid defensive player. That's why they got him. Uh, and Radko Gudis is standing directly in front of Wool when that puck goes in. And it's a goal. And the series is over. Such a and you, you almost just can't believe it. Not because, I, frankly, I was I, I didn't find out about the goodest thing till later. It happened in such a me flash neither. for me. But you do look at this and go, God damn it, right? It's a God damn it sort of play. You don't want to complain about the officials and you don't want to say it's the reason that they lost. And here, they, here we the are. The officials are not the reason they lost. They are not the reason they lost. The officials played this the way the officials play this every year. I'm so sick of this. Leaf fans, you got to hold this team to a higher standard. Take, if you know what the rules are, and at this point, you've been to the playoffs seven years in a row. You know the rules. You know how they work. When Morgan Riley thought the goal went and he celebrated anyway. Why? We yeah. learned that lesson against Tampa. You celebrate no matter fucking what. You convince everybody that it's a goal and you make it happen. That's Playoff teams know how to do that. You know what the refs are not going to call. So start taking advantage of it. Why? <laughs> uh, like, I've, I've been asked, like, hey, don't say they lost because of the refs. And, I, I mean, they didn't, not. Lose, they didn't in, lose entirely because of, of the refs. Why am I not allowed to point out that that goal would not have been a shot if a Panthers player wasn't holding a defending player's stick? This is why no one watches this goddamn league. We do. We've hitched our our well because we love it. We horse love to this rickety bullshit wagon, and the people listening to this, like you're listening to a hockey podcast that's niche. You're hardcore hockey fans. The vast majority of people don't fucking care, and it's stuff like this. That's why I know. But why can't we point but, out that extraordinarily relevant events? It is a relevant event. That's why I pointed it out. But to sit here and bitch about it, I'm sorry. I have no sympathy for the team for this. They put themselves in a position where a play like that or a play yeah. like the replay with their... And listen, they oh, did they outplay the Panthers in the first two games? Yeah, sure. But in game three, they, they pitched a fucking dud and they put themselves in this position. And then they allowed two goals in the first period of an elimination game. It's just not a league. It's No, no, no. Steve... This is the way it is. So play by the rules. The rules don't have to be fair. Life isn't fair. We all know, we all play the game of life. It's not fucking fair. We got to play by the rules, though, don't we? Or we got to play within the rules. And I think the Leafs have never, helps. ever done that. And I think Nick Kiprios made a really, really good point um, a couple games ago. And he said, do not ask this team to be what it is not. And this is yep. where we go to the offseason. And I think Nick is bang on the money. We go to the off-season discussions, and I'm gonna just mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw throw some questions at you. Don't answer any of them yet. Last thing on oh, on this play, I wish the NHL did have better rules. I uh, wish there. I wish I'm, there, with, I'm with you. I wish not even better rules in terms of like because that's an illegal play. I wish there were contingencies that other sports have. So Jesse, like, that's a genie wish. <laughs> this is not never gonna happen. There are a lot of simple happen. things that the National Hockey League could do to prevent situations like this, like in uh, football. Every um, scoring play is automatically reviewed. You don't need to challenge it. If there's something simple like every overtime goal is reviewable and like any penalty in all with, aspects, any any penalty within the scope of uh, the goal, like anything that result that leads to a result here in that OT goal is kind of reviewable. Like that could be a contingency. I'm just throwing that out there. That's in place. If you have an eye in the sky ref, that's something that a lot of hockey fans, Alan Walsh in particular, has been clamoring for very recently. An eye in the sky ref who can point out things that happen in the play and say, hey, you missed this on the ice. That is a penalty. If there is even accountability, the NBA has a two-minute report. So you know, like, hey, my team got screwed on the last play here. That should have been called a foul. They, they will publish that. They will say the ref missed a call. This should have been a penalty. These other sports have contingencies. They have rules in place to where we're not sitting here just being upset at the sport we love. I wish the National Hockey League had those sorts of things so we didn't have to be just bitching and moaning, as you guys said, about these same things and I'm every sick of, single time. I, but I'm sick of Jesse, bitching and moaning about it. I'm sick of...
guys, we're waiting on the league to change. The league's not going to change. So play the play the game that the league has set out for you. It's it. Uh, the, the they guy, don't. They don't. It's Squid the Game. Guy, they don't like. You know what? This is inconvenient. We should change the rules for all the players. The, the no. guy who's been in charge. I don't know if that's the same. It thing. is. It's exactly the it's same. Not, don't question. I don't it's know. Not, it's it. not great. I don't know. The don't guy know. who's been in charge <laughs> since 1993. I, I I'm really done with this conversation after this. Half decade extension after one of the biggest scandals in the league's history. So if you want change you won't get it do let's not move on watch I'm the not national asking let's move change. on i'm just asking for simple you're asking for change you, and yeah, you're not gonna get it you're asking for simple change and you will not get it we'll see maybe one day i can keep dreaming well i, I think i think it eventually Aero happens Smith once said dream on that's right eventually it happens guys but let's move on from that i i really hate this conversation because i think it takes the onus off the lease organization and I think that that is where it needs to be. I think this organization is very process driven. They've created extremely successful regular season teams. Nobody is denying that. Uh, and everybody's happy care. about that. We're thrilled for that. They've set records and points. They've set records and goals. It's incredible. That's I'm fantastic. I'm not happy about it. It makes it worse. Okay, but let me finish my point. <laughs> I know what you're saying. And I want to hear it. But I'm Adam, setting you up. Adam, fuck your point. <laughs> I think... That when we have the discussion about the referees and the way the refereeing changes from regular season to playoffs, it takes the onus. It allows people to look at expected goals or cycle chances or offensive zone possession and go, well, there's the story. They got jobbed by a goalie. And I have to be honest with you guys. I just don't believe that. And I'll tell you why. Here's the $11.5 million elephant in the room. Austin Matthews did not score against the Florida Panthers. And I know that Austin Matthews is the guy we can never criticize. We, we're fucking hard on Mitch, fucking hard on Willie. Tavares has been watched for three years for some reason, even though he's been a point-of-game player ever since. That crazy knee to the head from Corey Perry, which was accidental. Austin Matthews, I don't care what kind of injuries there are. I don't care what is, is happening. top-line minutes. The guy is the best player in this franchise's history. If he does not score, they don't win. End of story, guys. You, how many series did the Edmonton Oilers win without Wayne Gretzky scoring a goal? How many series did the Detroit Red Wings win without uh, uh, Steve Eiserman, Brandon Shanahan, et cetera, et cetera, scoring goals? Or, or the Blackhawks with Kane and Taze? Or the LA Kings with Jeff Carter and whoever else they had? They had a, their band of merry men. Uh, the, the Pittsburgh Penguins. How many series... Has Sidney Crosby not scored it? And this is what it comes down to, Adam. It doesn't need to be about the individual player. It doesn't need to be about Austin Matthews or Mitch Marner or Tavares. It's the combination does not work. They can't and they won't. Matthews, on July 1st, will be eligible for a raise. And he'll get it. He'll get a bigger piece of the pie. You think their chances of winning when he gets that bigger piece is going to go up if they keep the rest of the guys around him? They can't do it. They can't do it with this group. It doesn't need to be that he's a bad player. No, he's not. He's a great player. But if teams are able to zero in on this guy and lay a beating on this guy and neutralize this guy year after year. And it's like whack-a-mole. You could point to years where he was stellar. Rest of the guys were quiet. Mitch Marner has a great game. Next game, the rest of the guys are quiet. Tavares has a Herculean game. Rest of the guys are quiet. Willie's been the most consistent one by far. And Riley's been pretty good too. The combo of these three dudes making over $10 million does not work. We have enough proof of concept that we can say definitively it does not work. We've the, seen four years of it. The Five best it. they've done is five wins out of 16. It's done. It's over. It's finished. Let me, One let of me, them's gone. Let me throw a stat at you. And this is from producer, producer Drew. Marner's playoff totals uh, in games five through sevens in his career. 
He's played eight game fives. He's had four assists total. He's played six game sixes, one goal, one assist total. And he's played four game sevens, two assists total. And 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 it's not that's not to single out Mitch Marner and go, he's a bad hockey player. We all know he's fantastic. But I gotta ask the question. If your best players are not able to find ice, does it not tell you as a general manager that you are not setting them up for success? Now I know that they have to find success no matter what, because they're paid that way. But let's be honest here. The the reality of the situation is you've got Matthews, who's a big boy but not overly physical and isn't going to get into fights. He's got, you know, broken wrists and reconstructed this, whatever. Uh, you got Marner, who is still six feet tall, but because NHL players are huge, he looks tinier out there. And Michael Bunting or Callie Yarncroke, who are both mid-sized players who play, you know, gritty games, but they don't drive any play. They don't crush any bodies. Michael Bunting talks a lot, but I don't think anyone's intimidated by Michael Bunting. At a certain point... I, I, and I, I want to go full caveman on this one. At a certain point, do we not look at this and go, uh, we need to get somebody on this team on the first line who can skate with these guys and terrorize anybody that goes near them? They No, your top guys need to be the guys who terrorize. Kucherov terrorizes people. is a crazy person. Yeah, he is. You're right. Yeah, uh, right. Look at the avalanche from last year. Nathan McKinnon is nuts. Oh, he's, he's got, got, he's he's got, got those eyes. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the he's got eyes that suggest he used to pick wings off flies for fun when he was bored in school. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Landeskog will fuck your day up. Uh, go through all the cup champs. Ryan O'Reilly, a few years ago, along with the rest of that Blues team, will fuck your day up. The Boston Bruins need I say more. The Washington Capitals, Ovechkin will run through your chest. Who won in 2017? Sidney so, Crosby's tough as nails, too. Yes. And like, and so is it. Malkin's a psycho. Like, he's crazy. He's, he's out of his mind. You just got to have an element of fuck you to your game that this team does not possess. You can't teach it. It's over. Okay, so... Um, These guys might win cups somewhere else, but they're going to have to go to a team that has those players. Yeah. They can't do it together. The combination doesn't work. It's I over. agreed. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if any of them win a cup elsewhere. Uh, by the way, the Toronto Maple Leafs season ends with seven consecutive games in which they scored only two goals. Mm -hmm. You tell me offense isn't a problem. This is Luke Fox. It's the driest offensive stretch the Leafs have had in 13 years. <laughs> and by the way, five of those 13 years, the Leafs didn't make the playoffs. <laughs> Like that is guys at the at the end of the day. I mean that if the Leafs are an offense driven team and they have they have been, uh, you're not scoring in the playoffs. We know that they're not. And and don't don't show me the Tampa stats because they're skewed because of Game Two, where yeah. uh, you know they had seven goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality of the situation is this is just not working. And and so the question now is obviously like I said, does the GM stay? Does the coach stay? And is the core four, we can and we will experiment over. And yes, we include Riley in that, but everybody calls him the core four, so I'm just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. We're going to know the answer to these questions, guys, in the next eight weeks. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to know now, but what I will say that it, is this, is that the Leafs are probably going to be one of the stories of the next eight weeks. They always are, but like in real terms, this is going to be quite traumatic. We have rumors of infighting at the top between Dubas and Shanahan, and we've had those for 18 months or yep. more. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, like not just not getting along. Did you see them in the same box once this playoffs? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, game five. And or was it four? A couple. There's multiple games. Yeah. It's it was rare. Shanny yeah. was Shanny was very front and center before. Yeah. Wasn't on camera a lot this playoffs. Yeah. Uh, I thought him, that was interesting. Uh, right uh, front and center. Um, when they forced game seven against the Bruins, I think it was 2018. Fuck you, Bacchus, fucking piece of shit. <laughs> you could read his lips, clear as day. And you know he's invested. You know he's mm -hmm. invested. But Shanahan, and Steve pointed this out in his video, that his first move is, as uh, uh, president of this team in 2014 when he was brought in by Tim Laiwiki, who's now building arenas with his brother, uh, with Jeff Bezos. Um, Shanny 
uh, his first move was to re-sign Randy Carlisle. Isn't that he's his, been here so long? His main free agency goal that year was to get David Bolin locked up to a five-year contract, and the Panthers were the ones that said, "We'll pay him more." And he went to the Panthers, and he stunk. Uh, and then he got hurt. Yeah, he got hurt. Uh, this has been a very long run for Brandon Shanahan. Kyle Dubas has been rightly the face of criticism for people that don't believe in this experiment that they're pulling for a long time. But who put him there? On This is from Wikipedia. On April 11th, 2014, Shanahan was officially announced as the Leafs president and alternate governor. Our podcast has been or had been around for less than a year. And in two weeks, we'll celebrate our 10-year anniversary. They've won one playoff round. How does he keep his job? Well, and 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 so, like, I actually think, I'll be honest with you, I think Kyle Dubas has done the best job that he possibly can in attempting to make this era work. I think that the additions of Achari and O'Reilly were fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think the value you get on Jake McCabe's contract, like, like give Jake McCabe a, um, you know, a full preseason with this team to understand the system. Uh, to understand why they always do that stupid fucking back pass possession bullshit that drives me fucking crazy all the time and allows the other team to get set up so they can't make an off. That's You know what drives me fucking nuts about that? What? Is it gives the other team a chance to stand at their fucking blue line and go, all right, we'll wait for you. Whenever you want to come, we'll wait for you. They try to get them. Because they don't have a what? They, try they don't have get, a what? What don't they have? They, uh, they try to get them stationary and they try to cut through them like butter. I don't know what you're trying to say. They don't have a fucking four check. No. If the Leafs dump and chase, they're not going to hurt you. No. They're going to go. Yeah. So if they had a scary four check, you could you could do what, what you were just talking about there, get them stationary, mm-hmm. or you could do something else. And you could play that situation based on the parameters on the ice, the factors on the ice. But if you only have one option, it's pretty easy to stop it. So, so here's what you're never going to be able to answer today, but in the next eight weeks, we'll know. We're going to know if one of these guys gets P.K. Subban. And I'm, I'm talking about, remember when Mark Bergevin's like, we're not trading P.K., but we are listening to offers. Oh, I, I was like, given a TV job? No. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, we're going to. I'm sure one of them could, but I, I, I think with, with, with the Leafs. Well, they're available every let's, spring. Let's say Duba sticks around, okay? Because yeah. we don't know. There's been a lot of rumors about Pittsburgh and about him and Keith going. I think Duba stays. I, I would love to give Dubas the opportunity to rebuild the sides of the core mm. you know i would like to see you know Dubas. how many people just kick their phone across the <laughs> i know right but a lot of people i'm sorry but celebrate it. yeah I, th- I think Dubas is a very good general manager and i think that he recognizes all of the things that we're saying i think he sees that we've had seven years of process he it's time to the things that we're saying no but i don't think Dubas is so stubborn that he wouldn't move around the pieces on the chessboard so when kerfoot and hall get extended we're gonna revisit this conversation yeah okay okay if that if that actually comes to fruition like that'll be fucking wild and then he probably should be fired at that moment but um the the leafs have four forwards all right one two three four five six seven seven forwards signed through next season the rest of the roster is up in the air um and you mentioned P.K. Subban, Adam, and I think that's so – it parallels something uh, that's going to – that might happen here, and that's with Mitch's no trade no trade clause. Mm. P.K. Subban was traded immediately before his no-move clause kicked in, and Mitch Marner, unfortunately, has one that will kick in on July 1st this year. He is ripe to be the piece that is moved to – relief this cap situation of the top three players being paid over $10 million. We have proof here that it doesn't work. Mitch Marner right now is the easiest deal to move because you can one, get value back for him because somebody's going to want this player because he is one of the top players in the league. And two, the cap relief that you're going to get by moving out ten point nine oh three zero 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 million dollars. Yeah, you got to get your fucking junior number I know in there. Steve hates that 93 yeah. Yeah, in we'll, there. We'll, we'll play with a fucking uh, student 
as our goalie while our starting goalie, who's been great this season, plays injured as a result. That, Way to get your junior number in there. Austin in there, too. That $10 million that Fucking Dubas can stupid. move out, plus whatever he gets back in the deal, can make this an entirely new team. If there aren't, there are, that's a giant fix, but it's a, it's not so many steps that we think it is. And I would like to see Dubis. I trust Dubis in that if he's, if he's the one who sees that these moves need to be made, I would trust him to make those moves. I don't think there's room to feel bad for anyone who gets fired or traded. I don't. I no, agree with no, you there. I, I don't think anybody like if they should. ended up firing Dubas and Shanahan, and they traded Mitch and Austin and Willie, yeah. you wouldn't feel bad for any of them because like, the results are what I would, they are. You know who I feel win. bad for? Leaf fans. That's yeah. why. Yeah, I feel bad for. yeah, yeah. For us, no. Anyone gets fired who's been there this entire time. Uh, I'm like, yeah. What do you? What did you expect? Mm -hmm. And like Dubas, like it's not just players and personnel and everything. He treats people really well. He forward thinking. He forward thinking really uh, helped um, with their uh, sports fucking, science, sports science department. Thank you. Their analytics department. He helped establish a lot of things like, I don't know, maybe maybe he is. I know no one wants to give him a promotion, but maybe he's better designed for president and they bring in another guy to be the GM. Yeah. Well, I, I think there has to be. That could be possible. It bring can't in your be, Bobby Webster. It Let can, him be Masai. It can't be. No problem with that. You can't. It can't be, though, that they continue to do the same stuff, right? Yeah. No, a certain, yes. But like Kyle Dubas had a vision in 2016 or 17. Mm -hmm. or Sorry, 2018 when he took over. 18, he was GM. And, 14, he was AGM. And there were pieces of that vision that Lou was for. And there was pieces that Lou were against. And it took him a while to drop Zaitsev and move on from Babcock and all the other things that they needed to do to get things better. Uh, at a certain point, you you have to also recognize that Kyle Dubas is learning too. Mm -hmm. uh, he's still like not even 40. And I do think he's a smart enough person to learn. Running a business but here. is he? <laughs> That's a very good point. Well, it's I get it. Listen, no, no, listen, I, I understand that. But Go is he else. able to depart from one of the major things that he was against when he came into this league? Like, you know, the least the whole selling point originally, and people forget this, is that get the good young players, get them in the system, and if you need to get tougher, you can trade some of the other young players. Don't draft tough players like the Leafs used to do. They used to draft tough players in the first round because they're fucking morons. And, and waste the entirety of their prime. Yes. So what you do now is you say, okay, well, we don't have, uh, we don't have the, the tough guys that we need. But as Steve mentioned, and I think this is really important, when the tough got going... Uh, in Boston, it was Bergeron and it was Marchand. They're best players. Getting pa tough. Pasta plays with some fuck you. Absolutely. Uh, we, McAvoy. So is Kyle Dubas so process driven? And we'll find out this offseason that even after all of this, he'll still keep the core four together. Is he that oh. process driven that it's like, nope, we just didn't have the puck go our way. Look at all the advanced stats because... That is what this management group has done in the past, although they've been changing. The Nick Foligno trade was a big big trade. He first off came in and played pretty well, and then he got through the back injury, and then he stunk. But going after Nick Foligno and giving up a first and two fourths for him was a big change. That, that was, was not a player that the Leafs would ever have gone after before. It was, they needed, like, <clears throat> I know the move to make that year was Taylor Hall. Um, Hall, I think, would have made them more of what they were, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure it would have made the difference. Everyone thinks it would have. So we're, we're still like that doesn't solve any of the problems. I, and I, getting Nick Foligno did wouldn't have solved like if he was healthy, it didn't solve any of the problems. The problem was, uh, Adam, you outlined like Matthews didn't score, and the top guys didn't play tough enough to score. But but this they is do, my but my point Tavares though. Got hurt, but they don't delay the game. My point though, guys, is that we're slowly seeing a change in how this management group looks at this roster, because what they've done mm -hmm. is they've tried to bring it in. They've tried to bring the toughness in, the grit, the experience. Thornton, Simmons, yeah. uh, Felino, uh, Ryan O'Reilly, Nolachari, Marlowe. Yeah, they yeah. brought all these guys in. Okay, so that didn't work. So every, they have tried everything else. They've bolstered the defense. The goaltending is actually better now than I think it's ever been. Honestly, 
better than Freddie in the fucking postseason. And I know he's in the third round, Canes fans. Good luck. Uh, and if he wins the Stanley Cup, good for him. But man, he, he wasn't Stanley Cup in Toronto. I can tell you that. This group is learning very slowly and annoyingly that you need that toughness up front. And you need it on the first and second line. And I wonder if this is the year that they finally go, okay, all right, we've tried this. We've we've learned this. We've tried to bite around the edges. We've tried to add here and do this and what we don't. We clearly do not have it. They got screwed by the cap not going up because of COVID. Boohoo! Right. And uh, boohoo! Life yeah. life's hard. And uh, they didn't adapt. They, I think they are changing though. I just to say that Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari coming in, I think, is an adaptation. I think no, Jake I'm not Mc... talking about in that regard. Okay. Uh, the we can do the core four because the cap is going to go up. And then monkey wrench in the plan and it doesn't go up and they kept it together. That's on Kyle. Mm -hmm. it's well, on Kyle. I'm with Jesse. I think keeping him around is certainly probably better because he's built this program. I think he has a role in this organization. Um, but just don't expect people to be thrilled if you extend him as GM. Yeah, I think they can. That's fine. They could probably Who eat cares? that. It, it <laughs> might no, end up being the, the right decision. If Kyle Dubas' solution is whatever, like, whatever you guys are saying, like bringing in more pieces, like that's we've tried that. We've tried that a million times. It's about moving out the bodies now and getting new people in there. Like that's if if his plan moving forward, if, if I'm talking to Dubas about his extension, I'm like, okay, what's your plan to fix this? If his plan is bringing in the Nick Felinos and all that stuff, then no, you're not getting a job anymore. But if his plan is, hey, we're going to move the big contracts and get in new people to rebuild this whole team and still try and win because there's no drafting here. Like the Leafs are we're, we're well past tearing it all down and redrafting. You have two talented players in the top where you can move them to other NHL teams. No, you got to trade more picks to get rid of Murray, who you brought in for so, reasons. Word is he's going to be Robota Island and LTIR. So oh, that makes they're, sense. They're probably not going to have to Listen, that you can all. make an argument for that body. I think that that's, yeah. that's not an NHL yeah. ready body anymore. Oh. Yeah, I, that's... That's Fuck the rumor, it. so. Yeah, shenanigans. Everyone yeah, else well, is doing it. I think, I think that's a that. pretty good solution, yeah. Steve. The, <laughs> the Leafs started that and then stopped doing it. And yeah. I don't know why. Like, pa Tampa does it every year. Yeah. Um, no, he's, he's going to hang out with Jake Muzzin. So, know? Cap Friendly tweeted this. Uh, Leafs players, uh, seasons away from UFA status. Matthews, Nylander, Brody, Giordano with one. Tavares, Marner, McCabe, two. And then some additional contests. Context. Tavares has a full no-move clause. Full no-move clause starting July 1st for both Marner and Matthews. Full no-trade clause turning into a 10-team no-trade on July 1st for TJ Brody. 10-team no-trade starting July 1st for Nylander. 7-team no-trade for McCabe. Uh, Matthews, Marner, and Nylander don't have trade protection until July 1st. Now, and now who handles all this? Well, and like, this is why I think continuation is the best way to go if you're the Leafs. Because they... Man, uh, they got to make these decisions lickety fucking split. Like these are decisions that need to be made. I mean, they have until July first, but do they? The draft is June July, June, June nineteenth, twentieth, something like no, that. No, the twenty fourth uh, okay. through the. 26th. I should know that because we're going to be down there. So <laughs> it's like last week. Of June. It's not the twenty fourth, and I know that because it's that's, that that's it's, Leo's birthday. Party. It's that week. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's, it's that you week. were like, oh, we can't go twenty four. So that's why it's said twenty four. It's right. like that 27, 28, 29 day, yeah. or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Last week of June. Yeah. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> Um, do you say, guys, if, if uh, the one question I do want answered, and, and, and we're going to have CJ on next week as well after the Leafs locker weeks. clean out. So we'll have some more sort of insight on some of those questions. But would you say that this year showed progression? Yeah. We learned more. Do you feel like the team took a step forward? And remember, success isn't linear. Just because they got to the second round doesn't mean they're guaranteed a second round next year. Yeah. So you're not saying so you, what you're saying without saying it is it's not enough. Well, you need more than one win in the second round and one win at home in the entire playoffs. You guys know I had a nightmare of a drive in here uh, because it's Toronto mm -hmm. and it's just unfathomable. Um, and there were times where I was like, well, you know, we've made progress here mm -hmm. and it didn't make me feel better because I still wasn't there. 
<laughs> and they? I wasn't close to being there either. And it was taking a really long time to get there. Um, one, th- one thing I always keep in the back of my mind is like, I would trust Dubis to try and retool this offseason major parts of the roster. But you can always fire him next year. <laughs> like I'm not I'm not afraid of hey Dubis I think you I think Dubis has earned the chance to move the big contract I agree here. If, if I'm Dubis but because remember this comes down to his decision too mm-hmm. you give me a one year deal no no, no they're true. giving him I have a three. life no, no, to no. live in a family to raise no 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 no, 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 no. that's Nobody not what he said, said that <laughs> oh you're saying extend him and then fire him yeah you can that's, do that that's a thing that Daryl Sutter. Is sitting at home getting paid. MLSC has too much money. If this, is, let's say you trade, you traded Mitch. You you only brought back Morgan and Brody, and the rest of the decor is completely different. And they lose. They they failed to make the playoffs. You know, Dubis, you could fire Dubis with two years left on his deal. I would He'd say totally pay it out. Qualified. Can I can I just throw out there that apparently MLSE's board um, changed their view on that stuff when Babcock yeah. got fired with. How many years remaining? Uh, a lot. Yeah. Five years? Yeah. Uh, but and, but boo, boo-hoo, you own a fucking sports exactly. team. Exactly. I don't like this. Okay. You don't want to do it, but you're in a situation where your hand is forced. He failed again. The team didn't make the playoffs. Fire him. Let him sit at home and collect his paycheck or go sign with Pittsburgh yeah, next right off season. It's a loss. Whatever. Yeah. And then they pay part of the contracts. Whatever. This is also in sports. You can always fire them next game. So I give, I think he earned the opportunity to trade these big pieces, sign some guys, and then we'll see how it goes next playoffs. I think he worked himself into a position where, I mean, it's it's clever the way it's all designed. Um, he's put himself in a position where MLSE is handcuffed and he has to be the guy to make these decisions. Yeah. It's um, clever. I, I uh, If the Leafs do move on from Dubas, I sincerely hope that the guy coming in, even if Dubas is, is, is promoted to president or whatever i hope it's eric tolsky eric tolsky if you don't know is the guy who is behind all the great shit that don waddell does and i want to read you this because this is fucking crazy the original trade for tony d'angelo oh the flyers got tony d'angelo and carolina's seventh pick which they used to select alexis gendron uh good luck to alexis uh, the Carolina Hurricanes acquired the 2022 fourth round pick from Philly, which turned into Simon Forsmark. Uh, the 2024 second round pick, a 2020 third round pick, uh, which is conditional. Sorry, 2023 third round pick that is conditional. The conditions are Carolina will receive the lowest of the Philadelphia, Florida, or New York Ranger third round pick in the 2023 draft. The result of this, because Florida is advancing and going to play Carolina is that Carolina will receive Florida's 2023rd pick. And now they're about to tear each other apart in the third round. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> Flyers Nation just posted Chuck Fletcher went to Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They're so mad at him. <laughs> uh, uh, George Peros went to Yale. The thing is, like, like you know how certain teams fire friends, a general manager whatever. and they've got time and they interview candidates? The Leafs don't have time to interview candidates. You, you If you're going to make a change, you have to make it. Like, I'm sure... If the Leafs are trying to sign Dubas right now, they're having the conversation today. It's I don't think we're going to be any less busy than if the Leafs had stayed in the playoffs. It's 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 going, going to be, be crazy. It's going to be a wild five weeks. Um, Andrew Ray Croft said this. Uh, oh, fuck off. No, no, no. He actually, I I know he's been a bit he's a bit bitter about being a former Leaf, but he said Carolina Hurricanes versus Florida Panthers is east in the Eastern Conference Final is a disaster. Uh, if you are hoping for a sal- higher salary cap in the NHL. Now, a lot of people are upset about this tweet because they're like, wait a second, Carolina fans pack the stadium. And people from Sunrise are like, I've been once in the past 10 years. Um, And the the reality of the situation is it has nothing to do with the fans showing up at the game. It has everything to do with corporate sponsorships. You And TV. And TV rights. And, you know, unfortunately, you could pack 20,000 people in the game, but if you can't get 20,000 people to watch, that is a significant issue vegas dallas and they will get twenty thousand people to watch vegas I mean, dallas carolina florida uncle it's rough fuck a duck that's awful but buddy. if edmonton gets through and vegas is a, a market on the rise that's, that's good for canada and no one else like in the states that's worse that's but we need outcome. we need a canadian team in man we need them in the yeah, top we four do. 
Oh, well, anyway. I'm not even sure that's the better outcome for the league. Uh, Probably not. Brendan Shanahan uh, is going to be a question mark Mm -hmm. over the next few weeks. And I did bring this up before, but I think it's important that we talk about it again. The Shanahan era has marked a complete turnaround in so many things, in, in, in going to the games, in Leafs' visibility in the community. Who, the Leafs used to be a very much, oh, we don't get involved in anything in the community. You come to us. The Leafs actually now go to community events, do snobby. things. The in-game, the in-game is so much better. Um, the, uh, I think that, I know Dubas deserves credit, but the sports science and the, all that shit is the Shanahan too. I mean, and, he and, brought Dubas in to do it. And the team, which could not even win in the regular season, now regularly does. Um, so you got to give him credit there. But I wonder, too, with those two purportedly not getting along, how long is this tenable? How long? And, and, and if you're MLSE board management, uh, so you're part of Rogers, you're part of Bell, or you're part of Larry Tannenbaum and his family, how long are you going to allow two people at the top of this corporation, because that's what it is, to actively undermine each other? I think Shanahan's out of bullets. And... Uh, either he endorses Dubas to get extended or he loses his job. And I think that's the way it should be looked at, honestly. Um, he's the guy who chose Dubas over Mark Hunter. He's the guy who chose Dubas over Lou Lamorello. And if you don't think this is the guy for the job, you've been here a decade, you can leave now. Mm-hmm. If you continue to think this is the guy for the job, we might just let you stay, but it's your last bullet. Uh, Dubas is his last bullet, no matter what. And, and the thing is, apparently they're not getting along. Does he want to spend his last it's bullet on It's two Dubas? or none. Like, it's either yeah. they both stay or neither of them stay. Oh. Like, that's, I think that's it. Oh. Yeah, like, there's, I, I, I don't see a justifiable scenario where you get rid of Dubas and keep no. Shanahan. I, do, I don't see it. I think there's a justifiable scenario where you get rid of Shanahan and keep Dubas. It's not great. Mm. But uh, there's no justification for getting rid of Dubas and keeping Shanahan. None. Also, I want to give a big shout-out to the Florida Panthers team. This team never got down once. From game after game one in this series, I was like, oh, fuck, man. And I I, I did say it in between, and a few people did. Uh, I think you guys did, too. If you watched any of that Boston series, you knew the Leafs were in for a handful. Mm -hmm. But this team, whenever the Leafs score, never got down. And, in fact, several times they came back and scored within the first few First minutes after the Leafs score. Smiling and laughing the whole time. Just chewing on their mouth guard. This team is not to be underestimated. If they go to the finals this year, I will not be surprised. Carolina's been unbelievable. By the way, shout out to Canes fans. You got into this, the third round. It, so happy for of, you. They're kind of a good matchup for Florida, too. Are they, you think? Wait, the, the, uh, the Panthers are about to play their third straight team that lives and dies by having the puck. They're going to smash them. You think no. so? I, no, 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 I got no, no. the Hurricanes. I didn't say the they were going to win. Good. I didn't say they were going to win, but they are going to make their lives fucking hell. I didn't say Who's they were going to win. Who's your pick? I haven't made one yet. Okay. We're not making that video right now. All right. Oh, you're making a video. Oh, yeah, we're making videos. Yeah, yeah, of course we are. Yeah. We yeah. always do that. Yeah, you're right. Just Don, you know? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> That's like I just got here. I, I, I Okay, well, so. Welcome to the team, Adam. So let me ask you this, okay? Mm-hmm. This is the way too early management projection, all mm-hmm. right? And this can change this week. But as of this morning, the day after the game, when you've not had enough time to sleep about it, you don't have enough information, how do you think the management structure looks in the next eight weeks once we know for sure? When we know that story for sure, how do you think it looks? To keep both. Jesse, what do you think? Yeah. Agreed. I agree too. And people are not going to like it. Can we, can I play with you guys? I'm going to read a roster name. You tell me on opening day, 2023, 2024 NHL season, will they be a Toronto Maple Leaf? Let's go. All right. I'll do it from (laughs) uh, the Ford group on. Actually, the Ford group is most interesting. So I'll start with the defense and work my way from the bottom of their cap hits up. Eric Gustafson. No. Adam, you're playing as well. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Mark Giordano. Yes. Well, yes. He's under contract. Yeah, he will, and he's he's solid. That's fine. Connor Timmins. Yes. Adam. Mm, yeah. I mean, if Dubas is there, he'll be there. He's going to be uh, maybe a Marlin, but yeah. Luke Shen. Yes. I hope so. Yeah, UFA, so he'll need a new contract. I'll say yes. Timothy Lilligren. No. Yes, he will be there. He has signed $1.4 million yeah. through next season. Yes. Jake McCabe. Yes. Yes. 
two million dollars for the next two years after this one. Mm-hmm. Justin Hall, UFA. No. no. No, he's done. TJ Brody, five mil. Yes. Yes. One more year. Morgan Riley. Yes. Of course. Seven point five till forever. Matt Murray. No. Four point six. Uh Robot Island. Does yeah. that count? So he's on the team. Yes, I think that, that counts. counts as no. No, that okay. counts. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That counts I don't know. as no. Robot. I think it counts as no and yes. Either way, we believe the same thing. Yeah. Ilya Samsonov. Yes. Yes. RFA. Yep. He will be signed. Joseph Wall. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Uh how about these ones? Nick Robertson. Will he be no. on the least roster or the Marley's roster? Will you tell me? They're gonna trade him. Uh I don't think they can trade him. I don't. I think he needs to play a healthy season, and I think he's going to play it with the Marlies, who are a good team, and that's a great place for him to shine. Mm-hmm. But we'll this see. is, we're getting down to, how old is Nick Robertson? 21, 22? 21 he's, years old. He's very young. Yeah, so we're getting down to kind of put up or shut up years, though. Let's be honest. It's yeah, not- you, you, you very rarely do find Michael Buntings, and I want Nick Robertson to be just like his brother. I'm not rooting against him, but we are going to start to need a full healthy year, which is unfair, but we still need to see it, and we need to see a guy progress. Mm. I get why his his development has has been destroyed. Injuries, COVID, all that shit. Sorry, they're not going to delay the league to wait for you. I changed my mind. He stays. Bobby McMahon. Yeah, why not? It'd probably be Marley. Is he a UFA? No. He signed one more year, less than 800 grand. 762. He stays. He'll be a Marley. Victor Mete, RFA. No. No. Adam, what do you got? No. You didn't answer for Bobby. Oh, oh Bobby. Said, Bobby, said, man, said I said Marley. 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 Yeah, Marley. Yeah, yeah. Marley. Sorry. Uh, Jake Muzzin. Uh, I mean, LTIR. L- yeah, Roby Dye Island. Yeah. All right. Forwards. Zach Aston Reese, UFA. Gone. Gone. Wayne Simmons, UFA. Gone. Retired. Maybe hired. Matthew Nyes. Obviously, he stays on Full the Full-time first line winger. Potentially. UFA, Michael Bunting. Gone. I said gone, too. Sam Lafferty, 1.1 1. 1 for one more year. He'll be back. Mm. He'll be back. I think he'll be back. Yeah. UFA, Nola Chari. Oh, you're, you're re-signing oh, him. Oh, my you're God. Signing please him. stay. Sign him. UFA, David Kampf. I think you can Ugh. survive Kampf going if... O'Reilly stays. But if you can keep comp at the price you got him, which is like a million bucks. 1.5. Like, I mean, if you can re-sign him for that, if he takes that, you give it to him. Steve. Gone. Wow. Ooh. Ryan O'Reilly, UFA. Gone. I think he's staying. I hope so. Three more years at 2.1. Cali Yarncroke. Staying. He stays. UFA, Alexander Kerfoot. Gone. Stays. Are you serious? I think they extend him. Yeah. No. He's wow. gone. He stinks. At, wow. at, he at stinks. A smaller cap. Wow. And they even admitted it in the press conference. Like like Keith came out and said. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't say that. Yeah, but he said it without saying. He's not going to come out and say his player stunk, but he's like, he uh, <laughs> didn't rise to the expectations we expect for him. Yeah, man. He hasn't been good for a while. And it's like, I wish him the best, but no. No. He, he can't. He couldn't perform in the regular season on your in your top six. You were disappointed with her, his performance. So what did you do? Rewarded you rewarded him, over him over by continuing again. to put him in the top six. I, I called it from He's the gone. trade deadline. He's How gone. did you make all those acquisitions? And you still had Kerfoot in your top six. Go find another job. You could have stopped it. You still have Kerfoot. $6.9 million for one more year. William Nylander. You're listening to offers to see what you can get. And believe me, I fucking hate saying that because I love Willie. But I will say this for another player as well. Willie's going to stay, but they are quietly going to say, hmm, maybe. So your prediction for opening day? He will be there. I think the Leafs might get an offer they can't refuse, but I'm going to say stay. $10.9 million for two more years. Ten point nine three. What? 893. 10.893. Oh, I know. You, yeah, it went up because they had to adjust his cap hit about? for some stupid reason. What are you guys his, talking about? His I'm reading cap friendly. I know, but his original cap hit was... Yeah, that's not what it is right now. Okay, but Jesse, you know what we're talking that's about. That's not what it is. I, let me read cap friendly. Thank you. 10.93 million dollars. Gone. Mitch they are, Marner. They are listening to offers on Mitch Marner. 
and William Nylander. They are listening to offers. They are making offers. Carolina, or sorry, Carolina, Columbus is a huge fan of Mitchell Marner. They've wanted him for years. That's where Yarmo could get silly. And okay. Yarmo and, and Kyle have done business together. That I know that sounds odd, but uh, and I know they got Johnny Gaudreau, but I just doesn't that just feel like something where it's like they were the team that was supposedly willing to go to fourteen million for Mitch Marner when he was an RFA. Mm-hmm. I think they're listening to him. <laughs> I think he's here. Gone. You think he's gone? Gone. Your your prediction is opening day. Gone. Gone. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, eleven million dollars for two more years. John Tavares. Impossible to move. Stays. You can't. Not impossible to move, but can't. You can't move him and get better immediately, uh, because you're not going to get anything back. You're probably going to have to eat some cap. So it's like, I mean, what team needs an eleven million dollar center um, that badly? Uh, I mean, Tavares. Remember, guys, he was a hero a week ago. He put them into the second round. He's been a point of game player. Um, I, I think that the, he's staying. Uh, I just don't think that you're gonna if you put him up and he somehow accepts a trade, which I don't think he would. Uh, I, I think that I think that there's a question that I have, Jesse, that you haven't asked: Is John Tavares captain next year? And I think that's relevant. I, not because he's a bad captain, but if you look at the at, at even San Jose with Joe Thornton, um, he was stripped of the captaincy. Marlowe was stripped of the captaincy. If by some miracle he agrees to a trade, you'll have to hold on to him until after July 1st when he gets his $7 million signing bonus. Mm-hmm. Then he plays next season for $910,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even then, he has two more years left after this season with another signing bo- bonus of $7 million each July 1st. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of teams that want to play that. I also think the guy gives you a point a game. He's a heck of a second-line center. Um, I To me, he's not the issue. It's too much. Agreed, but it's not the issue. So Every team has a contract that's too much. If the contract that's too much still gives you a point a game, I'm okay with that. That's I can live with that. So opening day? He's there. Stays. All right. Last one. This is a two-parter. Let me finish the two parts. Uh, 11.64250. Austin Matthews. Will he be on the roster opening day? And then will he be on the roster post-trade deadline? I do not think it's a foregone conclusion. He remains a leave. This year? This coming? I think it's a foregone conclusion. He's going to make he if if they got through to the third round and he had scored a few even a couple goals in this series, heroic ones. We're talking about Matthews um, Adam, at fifteen million bucks. What was the first hour of the show for? I I agreed. I'm just but hold on, let me finish. He didn't. I know that, but let me finish this because I think that by not doing that, he's burned a, a bit of money. I don't think absolutely the fuck not. I think he has. I absolutely think he has. And I think he also understands that if he goes anywhere else, you go to New York, you go to LA, uh, you might be able to get a car dealership uh, to uh, to throw you a few hundred grand for an endorsement, but you are not getting the RBCs and the gambling companies and the everything else that he endorses. Not only does Austin Matthews make that kind of money in Toronto, but he's making, guys, do you think that it's cheap to get him on set? Wayne Gretzky 20 years ago. For three days of work for Ford, got paid half a million dollars. It's 20 years ago. What do you think players charge today? What do you think McDavid's charging? What do you think Matthews is charging in Canada? Big money. He's staying, but he is not going to make 15. What this is a $14 million a year player. What justification is there for him to make more than Nathan McKinnon? There isn't, but that contract was signed previous. That's why you consider trading him. I don't think that's... You that's consider- that's not... that's Steve, I, I love you, man, but that's not logical. This is a guy who scored 60 goals. And that's a, contract, that's a contract that was signed in a frozen cap era. We're, we're going to see the cap go up, we think. Oh, well, then keep them all. If the latest reports that they wouldn't budge on uh, the splits so that it's not going up that much. Okay, well. It's going up, I think they said like two That's what bucks. the update always fucking is. Yeah. <laughs> when are we going to stop falling for this? 
the doomsday scenario is it's either Mitch or Austin. I this team cannot continue with both. Can't. And and so here's the the question then becomes if it's if it's Mitch versus Austin, if you were to go that direction, logically, it can't be Austin. It can't. It's a center. I think you're it's right. a 60 goal centerman. You can put players with Austin that open up ice for him in the playoffs. Yeah. But you haven't done that. You haven't done that. You've put a bunch of you've put a bunch of mid-sized guys with him. He shouldn't be the scariest person on his line. You know, producer Drew keeps saying it, and I, I think that the name brand recognition makes sense. This player is not going to be available. But a Tom Wilson type, I don't know where you find it. But that's not my fucking job. Um if Tom Wilson's riding shotgun with Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner, nobody's touching. Him. Yeah, and build it into your uh, cap plans that, uh, you know, you're going to miss some guys for at least six games worth of suspensions throughout the year. Yeah, and, build be, it and be okay with that. Be okay with that. Build it into your plans. Um, it's the cost of business. We need nut jobs. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and maybe you do have the conversation with Matthews, uh, especially this offseason when you're talking about that extension to say, listen, we know and you know that we are a very well connected NHL team uh, in terms of corporate services. We can hook you up internally with any endorsement that you want from Canadian Tire to Pizza Pizza to whatever else, right? You can do anything that you want. And if you get endorsements, you won't have the 30% holdback that, they, that the league has on top of your taxes, with the escrow or whatever it is. You have to, if you're Kyle Dubas, have to convince these players to take a little bit less. And I know that that's something, I, listen, I hate it because I'm pro-labor. Labor should get paid what labor is worth. Matthews and Marner and McDavid and McKinnon and your favorite hockey players in the world are all underpaid because of the salary cap system. And it's why I hate it. These guys deserve to be making way more money. Their value and their contributions are way worth way more than the league than the league has to pay. But that's the rules. Them's the rules. So work within it. And you have to say to Austin, listen, there's a captaincy on the table. There's a legacy on the table with one of the top teams in the league. Take a couple million less and let us build a winner around you. Adam, darling, I just want to give you a hug. You have to do it. You have to. No, no, no. This is what Kyle, this is Kyle Dubas' legacy. Mm -hmm. He has to do this. He must do this. Yeah, you you got to sit down with, with Matthew's agent. You got to say, listen, man, I know that he's worth this. But if we do this, it's going to be more of the same. Adam, he didn't take a five-year discount to, or he didn't take a five-year contract to get a discount on his next deal. Corporate sponsorships, you can sell them on that. You can Adam, get them turned around on that. Adam, he's going to get those anyway. My sweet summer child, he's going to get those anyway. Then we got a problem. Then we got a problem. Like Rant, little, Rantanen's deal. I'm a little less wrong than you thought. Oh, I don't think you're wrong. I think you're, I think they I'm coming to. at it from a, this is, it's, it's not even, they it. have to do this though. They have to do this. This is where GMs and presidents and. Who has to do it? Kyle Dubas and Brendan Shanahan, if they're here. Well, it sounds like Matthews and his camp have the leverage. Fuck you, pay me. They're fucked. Unless they decide to trade him. Mm -hmm. And I doubt that they will. But somebody, and I, and I just went and told you that, Jesse, you asked us who's going to still be here. I just went and told you that I think they're all going to be back. Because <laughs> chances are they're not going to, they're going to get 75 cents on the dollar for everybody except for Nylander. And Nylander's the one you want to keep. Yeah, because he's the, he's one, the one who's the best on the... He, he's the, the one you don't want to trade. He's the only one you're going to get equal value for because he is the best value contract. So remind me why all the management is staying again. That's a good question. We're losing our minds here. <laughs> and, well, and we We're can't twisting answer. ourselves into knots. If you don't change, you won't get change. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to do some really uncomfortable shit. What is that? I don't know. This Matthews discount shit. Oh, yeah. Just like Hyman. Just like Hyman did. Guys, the fairy tale scenarios... We got to stop. I also These think... These are adults uh, with uh, representation 
And uh, he's got all the leverage. Listen, I hate to be this guy because I'm actually cheering for this team. When's McDavid up? <laughs> Adam. I'm asking the question. Why are you rolling your eyes? After Connor McDavid wins. is signed for three more years after this. He's after not up he until 2026. Mm -hmm. 12.5, by the What way. does that have to do with anything? 12.5, by the way. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Well, if, if if Matthews is so dead set on going back to Arizona or going to New York or going to L.A., why can't I start the rumor that Connor McDavid probably wants to come home eventually? In 2026. I'm ready. Yeah. Listen, I've waited this long. Why can't I wait longer? All right. I don't think. That'll be like the 70-year anniversary of the Leafs' last Stanley Cup. I'm ready for it. Bring Connor home. We're reaching on that one. Adam, are you saving sea turtles? Because you're <laughs> grasping at straws. <laughs> Oh, I just brought that up to piss people off. Uh, I think there's no... Here's the thing, man. There's no easy decision there. But one, some, one thing that each... Wh whoever the next management group is, whether it's the current or the next, they're going to have to be decisive and they're going to have to be quick. And they're going to have to make a lot of choices in a very short window. This is eight weeks now. Uh, and they'll get set up for the next season. And there is, by the way, not really many... Uh, free agents out there that you're like dying over. Yeah. Um, Frank Ciravalli had Michael Bunting listed as the number one free agent. The free agent crop this, this year sucks. It's not like you trade one of the big guys and then you just get all cap space and you go sign someone fun. Like, no, you need to make deals here. Could you, could it lend itself to the Leafs because trades have to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Because sure. they can't make any signings. Yeah. Any good ones. So yeah. it's like, maybe yeah. it's like, hey, we do have assets we could move. Maybe it's, maybe it's, and every team knows that. Every team knows it's a thin, a thin crop on, on free agency. Whoever gets bunting is going to overpay. That's you, unrestricted free agency and good for Mike. That's mm -hmm. awesome for him. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at this and I'm thinking like, okay, so it's a trader's off season. The Leafs need to trade. Mm -hmm. That's, hey, that's a legitimate positive outlook. And... If Dubas is the GM, he makes good trades. Generally. Generally, he's pretty good trades. I mean, everybody looks at the Tyson Berry, Nazem Kadri trade. That's the only trade that they forced themselves to make, or Nazem Kadri forced them to make, uh, that they didn't win. I think they've done really well. They've done pretty well. Felito's another one where you go, fuck, I wish I could have that back. But really, who could who can predict a back injury? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that one's tough. And I always talk about that. But let's not relive the past. Though. So... Uh, we can't answer any of these questions now, uh, but what we can say is uh, this is going to be real interesting over the next few weeks. We are going to be covering this team uh, along with all the other teams still in the playoffs uh, for the next, uh, well, until mid-July. Um, and there's going to be a lot of news around the Toronto Maple Leafs. So if you're a Leafs fan, buckle up. Uh, the, the fun just began. And... I want to do a big shout out again to Canes fans. Congrats on getting through. That was great. New Jersey had a great year, but Carolina, the experience wins out without Tavo Teravainen, without Sebastian Ajo, who could, have, who could have predicted. Carolina is going to easily handle Florida. It's not even close. We've learned nothing. I'm, I am ready for a 2006. You have, learned, you have learned nothing about the Carolina Hurricanes. You know nothing, Steve Dangle. That is, that's a, that's a. Game of Thrones reference. You I know get. it's been all over my TikTok. Oh, has it? <laughs> my TikTok is determined to show me that entire show out of order. Why don't you just watch it? <laughs> just simply watch this it. This summer. Fucking that. Make that your no, show. No, he's going to have Matthew's goals to watch, but none from the playoffs. <laughs> watch watch Game of Thrones this summer. We can talk about it on the show or something. No, I got a thing to write. Um, oh, yeah? yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Screenplay. <laughs> so if, if Edmonton gets through against Vegas, and it didn't look great last night... Um, it, it could be a Canes Oilers final eventually here, which would be neat. That's a recap. That's a, where are you? What is? Where are you jumping to? Well, we got to get on to the next series. Yeah, but why, you went to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah, I'm going to the Stanley Cup final because I think Edmonton <laughs> wins. Whoever, uh, I think they beat Dallas and I think they beat uh, uh, Seattle. I think Edmonton. I think the winner of the to me the winner of the Vegas Edmonton series is the team that should go to the Stanley Cup final. No excuse. Oh, you're saying some stuff. I am. I am. Man, Dallas hasn't looked great against uh Seattle. They've been okay. they've been good, but like uh, come on. See, yeah, it's look at Dallas and look at Seattle. This shouldn't be close. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but Seattle's there and we've been underestimating them the whole time. Also, Vegas is leading the series. I'm, I'm and it's getting Petro back because the and department I told of player you, safety is rigged. And I told and you they look so good. I said whoever gets out of that series is the one that should go to the finals. No excuses for either team. You started They are the with, better teams, guys. You started with Edmonds and Carolina. I said, finals. wouldn't it be cool? 
Come on, guys. That's all I said. No. I said, wouldn't that be neat? No, it wouldn't. Fuck it. Because it's not the Leafs. So, no. So, Dallas and Seattle play tonight at 7 o'clock. Um, Dallas can wrap up this series. Mm-hmm. But uh, it'll be very inter- interesting to see if Seattle has 40 different guys score again. Maybe. I also think that if if Dallas is going to win, it's going to be uh, Rupe that makes it happen. Man. he That's an early con to my favorite. That dude is so unreal and also not French. Remember when I said he was French? Did you say he was French? Oh, oh, I, I don't, don't remember, remember that. if I said was it here on the show or on Dang It's or both. But I, for some reason, got it in my head that he's French. And I got a bunch of tweets from Finnish listeners like, did you just say he was born in France? <laughs> and I don't know where I got that from. I was determined and I was sure of it. He's Finnish. <laughs> Sorry. That player is on an eight-year, $67.6 million contract signed in November uh, 2022. So just a few months ago. Mm. Uh, or will be coming up. Now, I want to talk about Edmonton and Vegas last night because it looked good for Edmonton until it didn't. Yeah, but that's the Oilers, isn't it? Right? That's They live by the sword. They die by the sword. They're How is it, though, in three team. minutes you go from 2-1 to 4-2? Because they're a team that thrives and dies in chaos. Oh, which is a uh, less oh. less popular Guy Fieri show. I also want to throw this at you. Look at the look at who's scoring for both teams: Connor McDavid, Jack Eichel, Zach Hyman, Mark Stone, Riley Smith gets his first. His the, first, really? Yeah, his first of the playoffs. Wow. Mm-hmm. Nicholas Hag and then Connor McDavid again. I of those guys, I think you can probably say that Riley Smith and Nicholas Hag are the least closest to their core. Even though Riley Smith's been a part of Vegas forever. And is technically a part of the core, but he's not like Petrangelo or Jack Eichel. The stars are scoring in that series. Nick Haig getting the game-winning goal with Darnell Nurse serving a suspension for instigating a fight that they both willingly took part in. Sucks. Has got to suck. What do you guys... Did we, we, didn't, we never actually got the chance to break down that suspension thing. Uh, nurse getting the same as Petro is a fucking joke. Oh, yeah. It's a fucking joke. I'm so surprised the league, the league didn't rescind... Uh, uh, Darnell Nurse's nurse, yeah. thing, like wh- why? They why? have done it, and even if you don't rescind it, there's no justification for Petro attempting to injure the league's leading goal scorer. That's what he did. It was intentional. He tried to break his wrist. Um, there's no justification for that getting the same punishment as Darnell Nurse. And I'm not sure. Like when Colasar inevitably gets two games. For the hit from behind on Eckholm? There's no justification for those two things not being treated the same. I mean, Kolasar should be suspended. That was a brutal hit. But the reason that it won't be treated the same is that Kolasar is is not as valuable to his team as Petrangelo is. That's, again, you're simply not a league worth taking seriously. I also don't think he gets two games. No? Well, because he served the five-minute... He served the five-minute manager as well. Yeah. Also... In terms of like the on ice stuff, um, Edmonton needs to figure out how to play five on five. Like they are eating everybody in the world alive on the power play. They were three for four last night. That's where all their goals came from, and they can't do anything remotely good five on five. Who do you start game six? Uh, I would go with Jack Campbell. Oh boy, they should have gone to Jack Campbell a long time ago. They Ooh, keep going back boy. to Stuart Skinner. It's not working. Um, Bruce Cassidy did something interesting too during the game. Like his hand was forced because they were down. He paired up Mark Stone and Jack Eichel on the same line. It's I think it was uh, Eichel, Marcheseau, and Stone, which is just deadly, and it led oh directly God. to a goal. All right-handed shots as well. And it's something directly out of Edmonton's playbook where they were like, okay, we have to pair up McDavid and Eichel uh, at five on five, and it hasn't really worked for them, but. On Vegas's side, like just ev- time in, time out, we underrate them and the stars there that can score. And the fact that he's doing that now and they're just they're controlling play versus Edmonton when they're all even strength, it's it's scary, you know? And and their goaltending situation with Brossois out and then Aiden Hill coming in and not missing a beat. Like a- where did Aiden Hill come from and to be this type of goalie that can just stand in a playoff game and be decent? San Jose? He's he's been fantastic in relief, and um, they're going to get Petro back, and 
it's going to be really difficult for Edmonton to get back in the series. But every single time Edmonton is down, they come out like gangbusters immediately in the first period. Mm. So I'm interested to see game six. This game six is going to be crazy. And it might be five nothing Edmonton with like two minutes uh, done in the first period. Or Vegas could just close it out. I it, don't know. It uh, feels like a seven gamer, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It's, they're so close. They're so tight. It's a really, really fun series to watch. Cassidy getting gassed and then immediately going to the final four with Vegas would be quite something. And then seeing his ex team go in the first round after winning the president's trophy. <laughs> it would oh. be quite something. I wonder if uh, Bruce Cassidy will have Don Sweeney over for drinks at his living room. Oh, 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 oh. oh. and then the fire him. Man. <laughs> <laughs> after he gets fired, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's it's kind of crazy to watch Bruce Cassidy too because he's like. Like, I don't know how you're not smiling every day like a pig and shit already. You know, like, I know they haven't made it even to the third round yet, but come on. You're up 3-2 on the greatest two players in the world. I think, the, I think life's got to be pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, okay. And then, of course, uh, so we, we're going to find out. Oh, go ahead. One, one question. Um, does uh, Ken Holland deserve to be fired if they lose here? No. He's made them better this year. Yeah, but you got the two best players in the world and you can't get out of the second round. You got McDavid. It should be a cheat code in every respect of the game. Echo um, was such a good move, though. It yeah, was. Fantastic. What I about the rest of the roster? Job. If you were considering mm. it, that Echo move was killer. And and I think here's the here's where you can you can shit on Ken Holland all you want. That Jack Campbell deal is a disaster. Yep. Yeah. But you can get out from disaster deals. And the Oilers aren't going to be drafting high anytime soon. So if you got to throw a first round to pick in, maybe they got to do that. They but traded. that you have got to get rid of that contract. <laughs> Does the GM have to have done a bad job to get fired? No. Well, look at hmm. all the Canadian GMs that stuck around for 10 years. Well, like, do you... What if you just Like, get... Bergerman didn't even get fired. He resigned. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What if you just get a new thought process in there? Like, you don't have to say Ken Holland was bad, so we're firing him. You go, he did this, he did that, he did that. It's time for a new look at this. I don't know how you how you justify it though. Look at the look at how well Zach Hyman's fit in here. I mean, God, they make Cody Cece work. Um, they've they found the time that they need to find for Evan Bouchard. They have some I don't know what like their their strikes against them are guys like Vinny Dayarnay, who they are convinced is an NHL player, and I don't see what they see. Darnell Nurse makes making nine million dollars is a, a bad contract. But crazy fucking contract, terrible deal. You're absolutely right. Uh Evander Kane though. That's a great deal, yeah. man. Yeah, and no. nobody. And listen, the there were some personal issues there, and they said it won't be a problem, and it hasn't been a problem. We haven't heard a peep. So, it kind of is a similar situation with the Leafs, where you're saying a bunch of good stuff, but the results aren't there. If they don't make it to the third round, which they still could, it's very different. Yeah, man, they went to the final four last year. They're they're uh, well, two games shy of it now. They still have a shot at the thing yeah that's that conversation to me is a lot muddier mm -hmm. i just look at Connor mcdavid and leon dry side and i say how don't you have a stanley cup yet well they uh, yes and i think all of edmonton is wondering that but i do feel like he has made them better he has made them better they could still be better if they lose in the second round they got swept last year by colorado well do they want in matt the murray third round. maybe we uh maybe we give matt oh murray oh my god <laughs> Campbell Murray tandem. Let's go. <laughs> well, you know, Morazic is the third. You know, you'll be able to uh, to. Well, if they brought Morazic, you'd have like an all LTIR all star Who's team. Who's going first overall next year? Let's go. <laughs> I, I, I bet it's someone. Good. I do think. I do think. Uh, I think Ken Holland's keeping his jobs now. Um, uh, something else that came up is Ryan Reynolds' bid uh, with the Senators not moving forward with the Remington Group. Apparently. They were at odds with the league over the LeBreton Flats arena. And I think the league wants to, uh, although I haven't seen a lot of details, that's the rumor that's been floating so around. So what uh, Bruce Garriock reported is that they wanted an exclusive bidding window for their uh, proposal. So they wanted, hey, we get to submit our bid and the Sens either get to accept it or don't. And they wanted an exclusive deal and they were going to go in uh the billion dollar area. And then the league and the, the people who are managing the estate said, nope. You don't get that. We're going to accept, well, who, all, we're gonna accept would? all the bids. And then they kind of like a petulant child said, no, we're taking our money and running. I think it's a bit of a play. I don't know if they're out, out, 
they say they're out, but I don't know if they're out out. Like they may come back into the into the fold once the bidding resumes. But that's the reason they don't want. Uh, they they pulled out. They announced that they were going to pull out. So it's interesting with real estate bidding wars because there's a lot like trade bidding wars. When when Mike Greer was trying to trade Eric Carlson, and I still think he if he doesn't trade him at this draft, I think he's really fucked this up. Um, he had bidders multiple. And it came down to how much salary were they going to retain? And they said they wouldn't do over 20%. And all the teams said, I'm sorry, it's got to be 30% or more. And uh, and you can see why they would say that. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, in, 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 but what happens is one bidder pulls out and then all of a sudden the price drops enormously. And I wonder if the Remington group, which tried to pull a power move, and they mm -hmm. were from all accounts the ones driving the price north of a billion dollars because this franchise should sell its actual value is probably in the 820s, 830s. And yes, you know, I get when you put something up for auction, you're going to pay a little bit more and there's no salary cap in the real estate world. So who cares? But I, uh, I look at this and I go, the NHL has got to be careful here. You need to re-engage the Remington group because they are going to be, they're the most public group besides Snoop Dogg's group. And even then they're still the most public group mm -hmm. and you need public players looking like they're interested because that's going to drum up more people to go in. What if Remington drops off, dr dropping off makes other companies go, man, should we be paying this much for a team in Ottawa? That, that, that not nothing against the team in Ottawa, but should we be paying a bill when we know it's about eight fifty in actual, actual value? That's why I think it was a play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I, But the NHL, I think has got to be careful, but the NHL is that also they're gone. The NHL also did the right thing by not giving them their exclusive window. They do. I thought that was such a not. It's not a ridiculous ask. Like it's a it's a kind of a bully move ask. But mm -hmm. you've done nothing to kind of deserve that. We get you have Ryan Reynolds and you want to build like they're the Remington Group is a real estate company. Like yes, that's, that's what they do. They're getting this for the real estate play as well as having the team. Like you probably be great owners, but. You don't get an exclusive window just because you have Ryan Reynolds and everything. So the NHL did the right move, and their response is to say we're pulling out. And, yeah, I think it's a play, but we'll see. Having them in, like you said, Adam, is a good thing because the more bidders you have, the more it's going to cost. So mm -hmm. we'll see if they can re-engage them. We'll see. I think it's going to be fascinating. If if the NHL does not re-engage these guys, I think that price drops below a billion dollars based mm -hmm. on nothing other than this is my guess. Mm -hmm. Their rumored bid was supposed to be in that neighborhood. So, yeah, maybe somebody else can get a little cheaper now. Steve, now. you okay? A little tired? No. You're sad, eh? <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. Are you tired? Do you want to <laughs> wrap it up? I didn't wake up sad. Like, I'm no? just... Uh, no, I went to bed at 2.30, set my alarm for 7.30. I'm tired. Yeah. Do you want to wrap it up? Because well, we're going to be back Monday. There's going to be more Leafs and more playoffs and more every senators. All of it, it's all going to keep going. I was just hoping my my pals could help me with something. My arms really tired. Is this from carrying, carrying the the the, the load? Yeah, the burden of the Leafs. Uh -huh. And like I just I need you I need your help with some stuff. Oh, <laughs> he wants. You to want do, to shave he your wants beard? To do the thing. <laughs> I want to do the beard? thing. He wants to do. I think he's been waiting to do the thing. All right, we talked about this. <laughs> okay, okay. So this is a manscaped beard <laughs> trimmer, and Steve wanted it shaved on the on the show if they lose, and we're gonna do it now. Do you want someone else to do this, or are you gonna do this? I want you to do it. You want me to do it? I want you to do it. Don't fuck with my head, though. I, I won't. Don't I, you dare. I will not. <laughs> Listen, man. Are we using this or that? Both. Oh, yeah. that's smart. Yeah. That's smart. So you we have, have a underneath. cycle bin that we're going to put a garbage bag over. You can hear it. By the way, Manscaped, who, uh, you know, we advertise with every single week. Use that promo code Dangle and you too can have this oh. sweet beard trimmer and you're going to get to see it in person now. Yes. Okay. And also use, yeah, promo code Dangle. You get 20% off free shipping and get the uh, the performance package 4.0 is what you're looking for. It does the down there spots, the nose, the ears, and the beard. And I think that's kind of key. The nose and the ears at my age all of a sudden have become a factor. Like I had some nose hairs before, but all of a sudden I'm getting freaking ear willows and it's ridiculous. So I stopped having boogers show up in my videos and that's because I use the the nose hair thing now. Okay. All right, Jesse, okay. you're gonna hold it and I'm gonna do? Yeah, I've got Okay. I'm going to just bring mine over here so I'm at least echoing in the background. We all need mics. All right. Here we go. All right. Adam is shaving Steve's beard for everybody listening. Ah. I assume you can hear the sounds of you're good, you're good. Oh. the worry. Manscaped beard trimmer Wow. This is really great. I it's don't have a beard, but it's actually excellent. Look at this. Come on. Oh, yeah. 
It grew in really like thick this year. It did. There's yeah. so many grays. You also look. I'm gonna leave your mustache till the end. I want to see Steve with a mustache. Sure. Oh yeah, do a handlebar. Yeah. Oh, I should have. Yeah, like an old that. baseball catcher. Oh, you know what? I'll give you a nice little goatee as well. I can't even do a handlebar. <laughs> Can you do the? Yeah, uh, here, look this oh, way. Adam, do the uh, Facebook guy beard what's the, what's the, the one around the thing oh you okay. know i've already cut him a little bit there but i uh, think we can make it work do the do the one where you really love canada flags <laughs> <laughs> do the uh we need some oakley sunglasses for that jesse yeah we'll get um, some oakley's when you're posting does, f trudeau memes how does this feel adam it actually is your, quite your satisfying. debut as a barber i can understand i can understand why barbers like to do it, it what it would is, Philippe say, your barber uh Philippe, who is one of my best friends and uh is uh, my hairstylist uh Philippe would. What would he say about the job? Just so you're doing? blocking the action. He would say that. <laughs> no, Adam. I would say that. He would say that. Uh, Steve, look up for me. Okay. I want. Ah, this is gonna ugh. be about Captain Jack Sparrow. All right, let's have a look at Steve right now before I shave the rest of it off. Sure. Let's get it. Oh yeah. What do we think? I actually don't mind it. Oh, I look hot. You could probably turn that into a Colonel Sanders, don't you think? Maybe. Like if Ooh. Jesse, if he grew out the sides. I look like Good. every. Go to camera one. Go to camera one. I look like every bad boyfriend in a late. Okay, go movie. your camera three or four. Which I'm one's four. yours? Your four. four. Go to four. Let's, there you go. I like it. I actually kind of. That's a good look for you. No, no, it's not. You don't think so? <laughs> no, it's no. not. What are you no. talking okay, about? Right, now I'm gonna get the rest of this chin hair. <laughs> Wait, shave the middle of the beard. Like, it's not a good look. There. What about that? <laughs> Did you get the flavor saver too? I, I just want to get your your, right. your uh yeah I did get the flavor saver. I want to get your mustache as well. Yeah, look at that. Mm. Look at that sexy. You're gonna have to shave right, his now, eyebrows. Just with a mustache. Shave his eyebrows. <laughs> I'm not Do gonna it. shave his eyebrows. His shave oh my eyebrows. god, there's so much hair. His wife will kill me. <laughs> shave his eyebrows. I'll kill you. I like the mustache. Do it. Get him. Isn't the mustache? Maddie's even saying, isn't the mustache cool? Do you keep the mustache? No. You I know, like it. No. Can you keep it for at least bring it home? Can you bring your mustache home? And I'll, I'll be like, honey, I'm home. And she will not tolerate it. She this. won't like that? No. Okay. Okay. My and then shave it. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I, I think I like this. You I know what? I You're right. You're allergic to fun. You're right. I can't. Look at how good. Yeah. I'll go home with this. Yeah. yeah. You have to go. I want to see the reaction. It. And so, by the way, film the reaction. Kiss it. Look. Exactly. There you it. go. All right. Eyebrows. I like it. Right. Yeah. Hold on. We do a great show. <laughs> so listen, we got a lot to cover. CJ will be on the show either Monday or Wednesday next week. We don't know yet, but it, let's just put it this way. It's not worth having him on until after locker cleanout, right? We, we want to see what the end of you're season... Not, we want to see what... You're right. I got to talk into the mic. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, we want to see what the end of season press conferences are going to be like. We want to know how the player interviews are going to go. I would imagine those start either tomorrow or, or Monday. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think we need CJ to get a sense of where this team is going and where they're at now. I also, just like but outside of all the Leaf stuff that's happening, I would just like to hear from CJ for a little bit about what it's like covering the playoffs this year. Yeah. Because this is one of the first times where, like last year we were back. And then this year, we're like back, back, you know, no COVID, none of that stuff. And this Leafs atmosphere was such a different year than any other year because they actually won something. So I just want to hear from CJ, any stories he has from the road, what it was like being in the locker room. He wrote that amazing story about them winning round one. I want to hear more details from that. And like this loss, you know, what the environment in the press box was and all that stuff. CJ so great with those stories. I think we should uh, spend some time asking about those things. So I, I can't help but look over at myself in the monitor. And I love I'm, it. I'm getting a little bit of Scandoval vibes. Yeah. Oh, you totally look like Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm as skinny and fit as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that Tom Sandoval shaves his forehead because he doesn't like those little hairs? You know those little hairs that every human being has just all over their their skin, like the oh, little I, white like hairs. With a razor? Where did you yeah, talk he, about he this? shaves his uh, from uh, from Vanderpump. He shaves his he shaves his forehead and his whole face <laughs> it's fuck? ridiculous i've never seen anything like he it shaves his face. yeah yeah literally <laughs> I, every time i watch that show i'm like la is very different man yep. just a different world it's a different place <laughs> all right so we'll wrap it up there i'm assuming right and then we'll be back monday 
Um, back to our normal schedule next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you're an Oilers fan, good luck. I'm rooting for you. I don't know if Steven and Jesse are, but I can tell you for sure I want a Canadian team in the finals. I, I want to see McDavid win a cup. That's not the way it works. I can root for them. I don't I don't just root for Canada. I root for my team. Okay, well, I'm rooting oh, yeah, for McDavid. Oh, yeah, because they're all rooting for us. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I'm, I'm rooting for you. Fuck rooting. you, rest of Canada. <laughs> we live in Toronto, and we're the center of the universe. <laughs> I don't. I live in Ajax. There you go. Anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks so much for listening. Huh, it's going to be an eventful week. This is just the start, man. Why? What happened? What are you going to do the rest of the weekend, guys? Golf. You go, are you going golfing? I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do the same thing as the Leafs. <laughs> Good point. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection confirmed.